Is Kyumku, it is all of you, Iweriko. Inomotu Otunum Isara Bear Aukuna Awizi Ieda Kuna Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode six of Fumito Ueda podcast. I am your regular host, Albert, and today I am joined by my co-host, Logan, and returning guest, Nick Sutner, author of Shadow of the Colossus and The Last Guardian, An Extraordinary Journey. How are you doing, Mr. Sutner? Uh, I'm great. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. It's exciting to hang out with you guys again, and it's been uh, a couple of weeks for me since I did anything Shadow related. So This is nice to dive back in. It's cool, hey, and like to have the usual sort of weekly thing that you're at any point uh, totally free to join us with whatever. And like we're, Logan, would you say that we're we're, we're kind of uh, digging into a pretty long odyssey with like what we're planning with uh, episode by episode, Colossus by Colossus, area by area, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's been going pretty well so far. I think we managed to uh, get some good discussion out of Alison Quadratus. That's right. right. Yeah, that's right. So it's been pretty good. But um, I'll crack on with the rest of the intro and then we'll do it like a round of catch ups of how everyone's been doing. So let's do this. So for our new listeners, um, the artist Fumito Ueda, who created Ico, Shadow of the Colossus and The Last Guardian, is currently leading his new studio, Gen Design, in developing a new title, The Girl and the Sleeping Giant, as we've come to call it. Each week, we chronicle the creation of this forthcoming adventure in the form of weekly news, informed and wild speculation, analyses, and more. Interwoven with reporting on and breaking down any and all new developments, we are also revisiting Ueda's first three titles, starting with Shadow of the Colossus, followed by Ico, and concluding with The Last Guardian. In doing so, we endeavor to compile a fully comprehensive archive of material, long-form, in-depth analyses and discussions on each character, creature, and location, personal stories from fellow appreciators of Ueda's work, interviews, theories, interpretations, and much, much more. The time has come for Mr. Ueda's unmatched and inimitable form of ongoing storytelling, world-building, and overall contribution to the artistic validity and power of this medium, the most profoundly moving and life-affirming art form ever, to receive a thorough, intimate, and loving chronicle, now and for posterity, for the, from the very community that has so embraced, cherished, celebrated, and resonated with the man, his team, and their work for close to two decades. We wish to thank you for the privilege of your time in listening in and joining us on this adventure. With that regular rundown out of the way, Let's get the show started. Amazing. So, Mr. Sutner. Mr. Sutner. <laughs> I just, I've, Mr. Become, Sutner. I've, I've become so <laughs> fond of that phrasing. I actually will probably end up writing like a British comedy pilot called Mr. Sutner. Like it's, <laughs> I'm into it. It's, it's fully, um, and like, it's going to be a mixture between like black books and 40 towers. And it's just simply off of the intonation of like, of your name, man. But um, needless to say, dear, let's do a nice big catch up. And how have you been in the past couple of weeks of either Fumito Ueda related or just like life in general, man? Yeah, uh, I've been well. I mean, um, I think the last thing, which I think was after we podcasted last time, was I did the uh, slow jam of the Colossus, um, which was uh, playing through the game over 10 and a half hours uh, with some local friends and developers and streaming it online, which was a lot of fun. Um, nice. And that was sort of my, uh, that was actually finished, like the first time I'd finished the, the game um, in the remake. Um, so that was a good time, and I haven't sort of gone back to it myself again recently. I've been playing some other stuff, but uh, things have been good. We just had GDC in the city here last week at the Game Developer Conference, um, so that was a lot of fun conversations and meeting. From you the, were there? Sort of the, yeah, yeah, I was there. Um, it's oh, it's cool. here in San Francisco and um, sort of a, a big thing every year, and it's it's nice for me having it like in my backyard so I can go That's and so cool, uh, be really busy all day and then go sleep in my bed at night, um, which is quite a nice benefit. <laughs> so. 
yeah, so that was great. Um, and I was in Hawaii for a week uh, for a friend's wedding. That was a nice break as well. And I uh, visited, uh, we, walked, we walked across like a volcano crater um, that was Whoa. active uh, uh-huh. in like 1959. And that being down there on the sort of like crazy cracked lava earth uh, was very reminiscent um, of the lair of Colossus number nine, uh, I believe it is. Mm, I knew it. Um, <laughs> yeah, which... Uh, <laughs> which was really cool being there in an amazing place and one of the cooler places I've been in the world. Um, so yeah, it's been a good, uh, you know, month or whatever it's been. Um, but yeah, it's That's a so pleasure good, to be dude. back with you guys. Yeah, man. It's a, and it's a pleasure to have you as always. Um, for sure. Yeah. How, how have you been Logan? I'm good. Um, I've been playing games, seeing movies. And I finished names. Resident Evil Revelations 2. Uh, well, yeah, sort of. Um, I, what have I been playing other than that? Uh, I've been playing 25th Ward, The Silver Case, which is the Suda 51 novel. It was, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, released on cell phones in 2005 in Japan. And, Whoa. Um, you know, yeah, being a game that was released on cell phones, there was really no way to play it for the past several years. And it was never released in the U.S., but um, uh, I think NIS, uh, NIS America has, has been doing a really good job. They they'd, uh, brought the first Silver Case for PS1 over, and now they bought the sequel over, which are just these weird visual novels written by Suda and a couple other guys. Um, they're really fun, very Japanese sort of police story weirdness. So that's that's mostly what I've been enjoying the past week. I did uh, get to see Pacific Rim Uprising, and I'm very interested to hear what you guys are going to have to say about that mm. um, on, you know, your Pacific Rim pop podcast that you do with a couple other guys. That's right, yeah. Shadow Dome, which we started a couple of weeks ago. And uh, yeah, um, there's... A little bit of connected, obviously, DNA through Guillermo del Toro, who has on many occasions professed his love for Fumito Ueda and his works. And he's, uh, you know, tapped uh, Shadow of the Colossus as a touchstone for how he wanted the uh, Colossus to look. And and so there's a little, like a little strand of connected subject matter Mm -hmm. DNA there. So I'm looking forward to diving into that. Um, Nick, did you uh, see uh, Pacific Rim Uprising or the original? No, yeah, I did see the original, which uh, I definitely enjoyed. Uh, mostly for it's like, you know, bombastic everything really. And I've always yeah. sort of been enamored with like giant <laughs> monsters and, uh, that was, that was a good time for sure. Um, even if I didn't connect too much to the, the stakes or the world or anything, uh, this yeah. one I haven't seen, um, I guess, you know, it came out right, uh, sort of the last day of GDC and it was just a busy time. I actually went and did an, a Pacific Rim, uh, themed escape room here, um, on the last day of GDC, uh, which was an interesting one. I've done quite nice. a few here um and it's it's funny uh, it's also funny hearing that you do a podcast on it because one of the women who was sort of matched up with our group um you know sort of paired up with a few strangers to do the escape room she was a massive like it's her favorite movie she's just a huge fan of it and i'd never really seen anyone quite that enamored with it um so i'm oh, sure lovely. she would uh you know she needs to know about the podcast so i'll have to find yeah. a way to get her attention on it um, definitely let her know and, and we'd love to uh, have her on the show at one point i'm sure she'd love to come and talk about it she yeah she sort of knew all the lore and everything and even though it's an escape room that you could go into and know nothing about it and still enjoy yourself it i think it benefited from having someone who really knew their stuff um and uh yeah i haven't seen the sequel yet um I mean, I probably will. I see a lot of films, and I like seeing things in the theater, and that seems like one, of course, to see on the big screen if you can. Um, I know it hasn't gotten the kindest reviews, but uh, I don't know. I'm sure it will be sort of fun at the least, yeah. so I probably will. Mm, I can tell you right now, with no spoilers, it's it's just a, a lovely fun time. You remember waking up when we were all younger, and like it was the Saturday morning cartoon feeling. It has sure. this uh, innocence to it, and a lot of people say, well, it's very different in tone to uh, Guillermo del Toro, which had this like someone called it. It's like the the Hokusai masterpiece versus the comic comic strip, and uh-huh. I was like, that's fine. I love both Hokusai, the painting, and all that sort of grand operatic, like uh, you know, Francisco de Goya, Colossus, beautiful uh, painterly slow moving amazing but um as is obviously shadow of the colossus which is how um particularly by the way just playing through gaius like yeah i i just had this moment of like oh yeah i i see why this is one of uh, at least a, a one time nick's favorite like the old flame unless you guys are, are you guys still together you and gaius uh, nick uh, yeah yeah as far as i know yeah. <laughs> drifted ask, apart yeah. for a while but yep. uh you know no I, I yeah i think so i think just uh i mean we'll we'll get into it of course but just okay. everything about it from the sort of the approach to the setting to the fight is yes still really stands out strongly for me um i was curious too logan uh for the silver case files was that are you um like a visual novel guy often or was that sort of a more unique thing for you 
Uh, yeah, no, I'm really not that big of a visual novel guy. Um, the experience I have with visual novels are the Zero Escape series, which I played. Sure. And then um, if Phoenix Wright is considered a visual novel, which I'm not entirely sure what people think of that, um, I played like half of the first one. <laughs> right, right, <fair> enough. <laughs> not that I didn't like it. Um, I just didn't finish it. Right. So no, I'm, I'm really not a visual novel guy. And, you know, it's especially interesting... Um, you know, I've been watching some YouTube videos where people play the original game just to kind of catch up. And and you see kind of commenters going like, God, this game is so boring. Nothing happens in it. And I, I feel like people don't really realize that, you know, especially the first Silver Case was like made in 1999 before any of the popular visual novels today, you know, were made. No one in America knew right. what a visual novel was back then. No one cared. And visual novels didn't have these like kind of fun gameplay conceits like where Phoenix Wright has court cases or Zero Escape has puzzle rooms or Danganronpa has whatever Danganronpa has because I'm not into that series. Um, <laughs> court rooms, so, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe also some kind of trial. Um, <laughs> so that was just kind of an interesting thing to think about. It's, it's really very much a relic of its time and it's a really interesting game because of that. But no, I'm, I'm not really and into visual novels. Are, like time. what are, are you, are you a pseudo fan? Like what got you playing it then? Just cause that's like a very I, I specific. Am, I am. Okay. Yes. That, that okay. was it was, was me being a pseudo fan. Um, <laughs> I, I've completed a lot of his games. Um, some of the more recent stuff that he hasn't been as involved with, like Lollipop Chainsaw and Killer is Dead, I have not played, but I mean to play them eventually. But uh, when it's suited, you know, directing a game, being yeah. heavily involved creatively, I'm, I'm definitely in there for that. Are you a Shadows Amazing. of the Damned fan? Um, it was good. You know, you can really tell that, especially when you know about the conception of that game and what it originally was, you can tell that it's kind of different from what he intended. Mm -hmm. Um. But it is a fun experience. Uh, Steve Bloom's voice acting is great throughout. Um, it's 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 a fun game to play at least once. Cool. Yeah, it's a it's a favorite of mine. But I I don't know anything about the conception of it, so I didn't mm. have any sort of context or uh, going into it. It was very mm. different originally. Uh, I am uh, super fascinated by this area of um like it's heretofore <laughs> untapped for me. It's um really interesting. Um, and I'm, as I'm listening back to this while editing, I'm just going to be like writing down notes of like need to kind of find <laughs> some kind of avenue into this. So thanks for for to both of you for um um yeah, that's really interesting, really interesting stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, Suda Fifty One is alternatively considered either the Tarantino or the David Lynch of video games, both of which are fairly accurate. Um, awesome. so he's a really interesting dev. There you go, amazing. Cool. Oh, geez. Wow. This is, again, one of the great benefits of the sort of wide spectrum, which, uh, you know, interactive artistry, we sort of accommodate that, is like all the, all the tangent taking. Like, we, we have, got, you know how, like, Gaius has, like, super long arms? It's just like, that, that wide. Like, let's make <laughs> all the tangent connections, you know? Hey, Nick, Nick, was that a smooth segue or what? Come on. Uh, Can I have a two out, of th two out of ten at least for that one? That was very, very Albert. <laughs> Thank you. you. Albert. Very, very Albert, which is like an ambiguous, potentially backhanded way of saying <laughs> like, you, you stumbled through it, but you got there, you got there. <laughs> um, but needless to say, um, I need to read off this, like we're actually going to jump into questions later, but the one... I just want to read it off to you straight away, Nick. We're going to do this, but it's like, is the resemblance, this is a question for Nick, is the resemblance to, of Gaius's head to a koala intentional? <laughs> and I just had to like feel that to This you is because... a question that you came up with? No, no, this is from uh, Cold Chemical on the, on the okay. Reddit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So use a oh. Cold Chemical. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Through a koala. Yeah, I guess yeah, I can it... see that. Uh, is it intentional? Are they, are they asking me since I'm a supposed expert? Supposed expert. No, and I, 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 I implore you to make something up. I implore you. Like, I'm going to edit around this if I have to. If you need to just create some giant story to complete. So you, black, you want me to say like, that Ueda had, like, a childhood yes. trip to Australia <laughs> and had, like, a sketchbook that he found, like, years later when he was making the game. And he was like, I need to get that yes. koala in there. Like how the koala like rescued him and like showed him to water, like he was like dehydrated in the Australian desert. And I just want to black mirror this guy and just be like, yeah, this is all true, just for you, listener. Right, right. You know, I see. Um, I see this pro Australian agenda happening here too. I see. Ooh, oh no, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Nick, come to Australia, bro. Anytime. It's all good. And you too, Logan. You need to guys. Uh, you if there's ever we don't really have too many like um, gaming events here, but uh, if at any point you guys uh, want to head over, just like. For, for I mean, there's like... a pretty good stretch where it's uh, PAX Australia that happens back to back mm -hmm. with the, I'm forgetting the name of it right now. There's another one, though, that happens like right before. So I know a lot of folks fly yeah. in and stay for that week and a half. 
There you go. So that's a potential um, uh, doohickey yeah. for a potential in-person interactive well, archery. Although you might have to come meet us in Melbourne. Yeah, no, that's all. I love Melbourne. It's all good. And we're actually in the process of, um, I've begun the sort of paperwork thing of, uh, you know, trying to get into Gamescom, actually. So if uh, you have any riffs about, um, sorry, uh, yeah, like August, you know, um, like there's got a whole online application thing. So I might uh, quiz you a little bit about, because uh, you've probably had to do that with like press and stuff of like um, getting passes and stuff for that, right, Nick? Uh, yeah, Gamescom is actually one one of the few shows though that I've never been to. Um, so that oh, one, cool. particularly, I don't know much about. Uh, I know it's like the biggest show, uh, biggest mm. game show on the planet. I think by a wide margin. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, no, there you go. So would you go to like cover it as press? Yeah, that's basically, and I have um, two people, uh, one's in Croatia, one's in Italy, Daniela and uh, Dean, who have joined me for like, they've been on 21 episodes of uh, Death Stranding Podcast, and they're like, like we can totally travel, we can do it. So I'm just figuring out um, whether or not we count as like an entity uh, so sure. far. They're like, you need to have a certain I amount of like output and stuff, but you know. Right. I, w I mean, I would like to imagine that you do. So um, hopefully that's hmm. a, a straightforward thing. Um, but yeah, I know it is a pretty massive show that's that's cool that you guys are all going to go to it for sure um I dig. but yeah i mean i would also think about yeah think about coming to like pax prime or e3 or something one year i think it and if you're unable to come i'll just print off a bunch of those um freelance bohemian um cards and i'll just hand <laughs> to them start out on your behalf out, yeah, yeah okay, man thanks. i got you covered <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> too easy well um for our returning listeners or just in general we kind of at this point like to sort of um just remind you guys that we don't just Im immediately go off the cuff we do have like a rough sort of skeletal structure to the show so after our kind of catch up we'll give a bit of an overview of how we're sort of going to break down talking about this week's subject which is the third colias colossus uh gaius that's that's me <laughs> slipping into um my god of war stuff because i'm all about like like looking at you know calliope and all this stuff here i've just like it's all a mix uh since we spoke uh, um nick i think i've started two other podcasts so it's just <laughs> it's just crazy so <laughs> what, what does that put you at total um we're at five shows today as, as of today and um per week and i host um, one show every week as one show wow. every wow it's early in australia here we go let's let's uh just give myself a little slap in the face let's let's uh let's make this happen so yeah no um one show every day for every weekend for every weekday and we are starting a dune podcast soon as well which i will not oh, be wow. hosting but um yeah so um Ooh, cool. i'm gonna get ahead of the curve with uh, Villeneuve working on that so that should be fun yeah i was fun. wondering um with the newest news when we were gonna get sky guys our no man's sky <laughs> ah. <laughs> I um I, I haven't even played No Man's Sky. That's just Sky Guys. <laughs> Thank you. Like Logan, you gave me a small heart attack just then, but uh um <laughs> But yeah, actually, this morning I was um, working on the perfectly phrased tweet to um, to Steve West, who played Galahad in the Order eighteen eighty six, because um, I want to interview that uh, insanely talented dude. Um, his uh, intro to the um, uh, the very first twenty thirteen trailer is just it like still sends chills down my spine like um that whole thing about like the age of industry and like he so a vastly underappreciated um title that i've just like i've said like okay so how many people worked on this okay 300 i'm gonna have 300 episodes of this podcast and i'm starting it in november and um yeah so doing by that time podcast. Yeah, the order 1886, uh, wow. and 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 like the saga going forward, and it's just like I'm gonna just be that one dude to keep that flag flying um, into. <laughs> Do you think that there is a future for that series? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and you've um, you know, the oh, the excellent uh, Robin Gaming put together. Um, it was a bit of a, a dourly titled um uh, video. It was something like the downfall of the Order eighteen eighty six, where he he sort of ties in the narrative of, you know, the game itself being about the downfall of an order and that like the sad tragedy, you know, um, of what happened in in the real world, where it was um to me inexplicable. I don't want to be naive and say that oh well, you know, I saw the factors that contributed it to it being misinterpreted and not being like catching on. And and, and having that same opportunity that Uncharted and uh, Assassin's Creed did, which was like, oh, the first title like got some things right, but like the next title, boom, straight away, Assassin's Creed Two, mm. cult cl like amazing classic, and launched the the franchise. And same with Uncharted, like Among Thieves, like boom, you know. So uh, Robin yep. and I are wondering, like, why hasn't that happened for the order yet? Like they developed so much tech um, for that. So yeah, it's um it's gonna be that. And then uh, you know, again, literally, uh, I've already like accepted if they don't do. 1887 i've already been like this is worthwhile unto itself because these guys did guys did something completely unsung and uh so egregiously mm. underappreciated so 
Well, when it is free on PS Plus, uh, I will let you know what I think of it. I'll, I'll <laughs> send might, you a damn good. That, that, that might sound code. kind of mean, but... Um... <laughs> no, nah, man, it's all good. It's all good. But uh, there's, uh, well, there's a little... Yeah, go for ahead, what it's Nick. worth, I'll, I'll, I'll throw my head in too. And I, I mean, I have, I have it free from when I worked at Sony, but I will say uh, once it's free and Logan will join, then I'll play the game finally and I'll join you guys on that podcast as well. Sweet. <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. Thank you, Nick. That's awesome to know. Awesome. Well, now let us. Oh, yeah. So I was in the middle of the thing. Okay. So, yeah, after the overview, we'll go a bit of news. Um, it's not going to be much because, apart from like, and I wanted Logan to kind of have the ability to, because I, yeah, you're on the last episode that when I patched you in, when I sort of cut in your sort of section because you, you recorded separately, mm -hmm. um, you weren't able to get your full kind of spiel out. So I'd love to hear what your extended thoughts on like a gen design getting the award and everything, which is really cool um, for Last Guardian. Um, and then we'll jump straight into the Reddit questions, which for Nick, we have a few because I have phrased it as. You know, it's like um, if you have any questions and comments for Nick, um, submit them below, etc. So we'll go through that, and um, then we'll jump straight into like all kinds of amazing nomenclature, trivia, slight uh, stuff with uh, with Gaius, and just have our well, our round table on e each of our uh, thoughts on that particular colossus. So awesome! And then like after that, supporter shoutouts, and then sign off. So um, awesome! So yeah, now let, let me just cut it quickly to to Logan. Um, when you uh sort of when you when you sort of submitted um that thing like last last episode and you were talking about um like uh you, you were sort of ca like the way that you phrased it about you know how we had that person say uh they sent in that message about like the different ways to kind of talk about each colossus like, do you have that with you by any chance mm -hmm. Logan? Yes, I do. Yeah, that was um the user. I'm gonna get his name in a second because I have it saved. Mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 uh, TG Mana Samana. Um, Thank that was you his so name. Much, TG. Hmm. And yeah, yeah, I, I messaged him today. He has not responded yet. Um, but basically, Nick, uh, what it was is that um, the day we recorded the Valis episode, we found this post by this guy on Reddit um, who was specifically asking people um, which one of the Colossi impacted you. And um, in his post, he actually had these like kind of these survey questions that he put forth. And we were like, oh, this is a really cool way to structure discussion about yeah. the Colossi. Um, so we're just going to kind of co-op this guy's thread, use his questions in order to structure our discussion. But he he doesn't know about that yet. So I, I messaged him today, <laughs> just, yeah. just assuming assuming that I think, he'll be okay with it. I think I'm sure he'll be, be flattered. Fine yeah it'll be fine so no that's going to be really good and and and, sh and thanks for um for grabbing that uh, logan i just you know how with reddit if you you have the, everything's logged but it, it's like it can be an endless uh, an exercise of endless scrolling oh also nefarious thing i found out for both of you just an extra sign that we're heading towards like hardcore can't go back orwellian times so the reason why you find things difficult to to discover on your timeline is they're purposefully jumbled up because to, to prompt that kind of manic searching so that you see more ads and so you're increasingly distracted like they actually they, they fuck you over essentially is what i'm saying um oh jesus so uh so um but uh now if we were to look at the contents of the show so far we're looking at a, about an 80 percent order 1886 a good little dash of orwellian <laughs> so let's that let's dive in and by the way um logan that big interview with fumito let's um put that into the next one because i want to just dive full yeah into i've that. been thinking yeah. about that too yeah that's what yeah. it's shmopulations yeah yeah shmopulations yeah nick we have this week we found this massive interview with Fumito Ueda about just like the dude himself and like because it's we are yeah, the Fumito Ueda podcast we were, we were we were looking at starting to establish like a regular segment where we read through uh, a chunk of this interview each each episode um for the past two I've actually uh, spoken with this uh, sculptress which I introduced you to Naza Goreng who who created right, like right. she's yeah 400 hours on that uh, tri um, Trico um, figure um, which she now is refusing to she's almost like tantamount to refusing to sell because she's like uh, she's like developed a connection with it like the boy did in the game she's like i'm sure yeah <laughs> After that many hours yeah. and something yeah that was incredible and yeah i think that that uh i i mean it's been a couple of years for me but i think that interview was one that i mined quite a bit for my book um because yeah schmuckleisms mm -hmm. was an awesome is an awesome site and i think that was one that i yeah that i definitely got a lot of info from amazing yeah so that's well there you go amazing so um, uh, i i dig that we all sort of we sort of found that in our own way and uh, it's definitely like super comprehensive so we're looking definitely looking forward to digging into that Okie dokie. So, um, Logan, would you like to take us through the questions that um, we're going to sort of, uh, this amazing uh, user from Reddit that we're just going to yeah, like, sure. low-key credit them until they uh, chime in and be like, oh, thanks, by the way, or whatever <laughs> their reaction will be. <laughs> yeah, go for it, Logan. Yeah, so uh, TG Manasamana's questions. Uh, the way you discovered one of the Colossi, you, you, you might consider these factors. 
Mm. The way you discovered one of the colossi, the way you were impressed by a location, the way the boss battle characterized your experience is kind of nebulous. And mm. any specific characteristic of the colossi. So basically, um, what was it like first seeing it? Um, what is the appearance like? Um, what is the location? You know, yeah. what did that impress on you? And then what is the actual experience like? And, and how is that related to the grand scale of the game or whatever? Which, you know, is all stuff that Nick goes into. Uh, in, yeah. that you go into <laughs> in your book that's right and we made the decision uh, earlier um nick to just like well you know reading from your book with you on the show it would just be like what like we got the guy here <laughs> it's like, oh and nick Sutner goes in goes on to say oh wait like i'm literally here dudes <laughs> it's like what's up <laughs> i can sure, answer your questions i probably should yeah. have grabbed a copy of it to refresh myself but we'll see how it goes you're fine, dude. Um, and yeah, by the way, um, it's been really cool. Like just like every episode, we just tell people, hey, yo, boss fight books. Let's like make that. And it's just been uh, like naturally, we just, because obviously we, we sort of pull a little bit from each of the, ep it just feels like uh, something like an A for, if you, uh, Logan and I were starring in like an 80s fantasy movie of like, we have this like tome with us on our adventure. And like each, <laughs> e each week's episode, we open it up and read a new page. And it's like, it's really nifty. I really dig it. That's, that's um, great to hear. I would appreciate you guys uh mentioning it i think you know it, it definitely is, is like a companion's guide of some sort or like a travelogue yeah. so i think the way you guys are going through the game is is really a you know perfect compliment to all these things that's right yeah i am um following along with it every week so i'm reading yeah close to when we record awesome that's right i'm playing each colossus every week as well um yeah so awesome fantastic fantastic so now let us take a, a sort of round table, Logan, if you'd like to just ask that first question and just throw it to Nick and we'll uh, we'll do the round table from there. Go for it. What was it like discovering the Colossi itself? Yeah, man, uh, it's interesting to sort of think back to that moment of discovery because now, now that is like, you know, it's not really a moment to, I anymore in a yeah. sense, like that's something you can't have back, uh, which is part of the magic of playing it for the first time. And I think part of what's cool, I'm sure, about people playing the remake for the first time now and having that, those moments for themselves. Um, but yeah, I think just that that uh, that setting um, leading up to guys, which is sort of when you're like, it's, I think it's the first time you're really going through sort of those tight cave walls and then it opens up mm -hmm. into the lake. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I, I do remember the feeling of the first time um, getting to that area and jumping in the lake, especially that I didn't know if something was going to like come up from the bottom and grab me. Um, yeah. So there was no, there was no sort of established vocabulary for what the Colossi could be or where they'd come from. And um, so even, even that foreboding feeling of like being in the lake and, uh, and sort of you're like learning to swim as wander uh, and not sure what's there. And you're sort of starting to ascend this thing that looks like a weird, like, you know, to me, it always looks like this like weird crash landed alien ship, this sort of weird upside down yeah. thing. And just the, uh, tension of like what is on top of this platform i have no idea and uh, you know that that jump i think um where you have to jump from the sort of piece that spirals out of the water up to the platform is a pretty tricky jump that i think the first time i'm sure took me quite a few tries and i think uh i mean i mentioned this in the book too but i think it's interesting because it serves both i think to to like to explain to you that falling into the water doesn't hurt you uh, and also to train you for some jumps you might have to do in the fight um but i think uh yeah, I don't know, just that just that feeling of like sort of uh failure and having to like having to get past that obstacle to even be able to get up to the top to even be able to see what's there. It was like this very multi step thing, um, that then of course has a huge impact when you actually get there and you're like, What is this big pile of rocks? And then he stands up and it all, you know, goes crazy from there. Um mm. but that yeah, just that valley and uh the feeling of being like in this enclosed uh or next to this enclosed lake. Um and then the way that it, the sort of landscape changes as you move up and especially as you climb up Gaius and you realize that you have, you're sort of in this crater and you can see over the whole forbidden lands. And I think it's the first time really in the game that you get that sort of perspective. Mm. Really interesting. Um, and then I will um, reflect that question back right onto you, just like freaking, you know, the boy from Last Guardian, like Mirror Shield. Now you answer the question, Logan, go. It's your okay. Turn. Yeah. Um, so I think Nick also talks, I, I don't know why I keep, in the third person i guess just because i'm talking <laughs> about actually reading the book that's fine yeah you know it's that text cool. yeah but you say in the book um you know how this is really kind of the first time where a lot of players might sort of start feeling a little more free in the forbidden land and kind of getting distracted by lizards or, or save shrines or mm -hmm. what have you mm -hmm. um that's definitely true 
Um, you know, I think a lot of first-time players are going to go straight to Vallis. Um, then they're going to go straight to Quadratus when they realize where he is. Uh, but then, you know, guys, that's a, like a much longer uh, route to get to him. Right. Mm. So you, you're probably just going to go look for a save shrine, just kind of run around with your horse and run around Ragra. Yeah, and the um, symbolism of crossing the gorge is also like, so you've had your, it's just like you've had your little um, mm. uh, shallow end experiences now. Okay, so uh, literally a threshold is being crossed into the, uh, you know, the, the extended adventure and like the wider world as represented by, uh, yeah, uh, Gaius. And, and, and I think yeah. even that... Um that sort of moment of uh, crossing the gorge for the second time, because the first time you cross it and then you sort of take a right, you know, mm. um, to go down to Quadratus and then the feeling of like, sort of you're, you're doubling over your path, but this time you're going further. And I think that that feeling happens a few times in the game where you head towards somewhere you've already been, but now you take mm -hmm. it a step further and you're taking it a little deeper and going into more unfamiliar territory. Mm. Has that feeling of something like um again you, you know the implication is that it's wonder infecting this place because it's forbidden it's sacred and he enters as this literal like this dark presence which eventually we see him become oh. but it reminds me of like how cancer spreads it's like it just explores all the veins all the avenues and it just like um that's kind of how I see wonders um wonders sort of presence in the in the lands being mm -hmm. something that yeah you can't that you can't escape you know yeah yeah I mean actually exploring it though is is you know quite tranquil obviously. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, I, I, you don't, you don't feel, you don't feel like a cancer. <laughs> of course, exactly, and that's the the beautiful interplay. And I mean, coming from the man with the tumbler, you know, the lands of light and dark, like you, you, you know what I mean? Like it's it's this thing of um, a beautiful, like dappled light, like astonishing, epic, uh, and in some ways very serene setting, but with a narrative that can be considered, depending on your point of view, uh, team Colossus, team Wonder, now fuck that. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, depending on your point of view, uh, it can either be. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, it's I I'm I'm a bit of a I lean towards the Colossi, but uh, I I I admire um, Wanda and and like we've had the focus episode on him and and um, and Mono and everything, but like I'll dip into my thoughts on him uh, as we go along. But um, did I uh, please continue, Logan? If I've uh, I just been just trying yeah. to build on your um, points. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I guess you know the 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 actual uh, location of of. The Colossi is another point, but I guess, you know, in talking about leading up to Gaius, um, you know, unlike some other Colossi, um, you know, like number six, um, uh, you know, the location where you fight him, you kind of get to see it a while before you actually mm. kind of part of the experience of going up to him is, is sort of seeing where he is. Mm. Um, it's, you know, certainly one of the more amazing and fantastic uh, locations in the game. Mm -hmm. What a um, reveal! I don't know though, what the heck literally, it is. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really cool. You go, you yeah, you know, the corridors leading up to it are, are really like they're very. Yeah, and yeah, they. I think in the remake, there's like all these these really large chains that that go from like these rocks in the lake up yeah. to the platform. Yeah, I don't remember those. if those are in the original. Do you remember, Nick? Uh I'm trying to picture it now again in the remake. Um... I feel like there was some, uh, yeah, some sort of like threads of something um, that I couldn't quite tell if that was supposed to be part of the rock or part of the surrounding mm. earth there. But definitely, yeah, I don't, I don't remember it as being changed. So that's interesting to hear that that was something you noticed in the remake. Mm. Yeah, no, there's they're they're definitely changed in the remake. There um there are these rocks jutting out of the lake, and there's some very large chains that go up from the rock onto the uh, the platform. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, you know, that's just it's it's all very iconic. Uh, the location guys himself, which I'll get into later. Um, I can confirm. Sorry to interrupt, Logan. I can confirm that there aren't any uh, in the um, in the 2005. Oh, it's just, I'm okay. Looking yeah, at that's it now. yeah. So, interesting. An, an, so an extra flourish, which like weirdly it just fit for me. Um, it is as you said, Nick, just like this weird thing that resembles, uh, you know, like almost like a spaceship type thing, and and the idea of it. Um, you know needing to be stable because it is like it's it's jutting out of this lake thing i can imagine it's not too far of a stretch for the chains to be there to i don't know keep it straight or something who knows you know it, it actually so... after i saw district nine uh which i think was 2009 no 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 um, you mispronounced it it's district district nine oh very nice well done <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding oh my god that's the one thing i can say in that accent <laughs> sorry more than uh, i can say uh, um prunes. yeah <laughs> prawns are good um <laughs> that uh it reminds me of the ship from district nine basically um it's just sort of this big flat thing that has like architecture growing down from it um mm. i mean obviously it came out before the movie but that's something where it always it always connects in my mind now that's right okay well i'm going to speculate if it's okay with your leave um logan i would love to yeah uh, yeah speculate. i mean just 
yeah. you know, I just want to say like with the location guys, like it's really one of those structures where, I mean, and, and so many of the locations are like this, which is like really funny where, um, you know, um, you hear all these people say, oh, well, you know, you get to these ruined cities and you wonder who built them and, and why they were built. But mm -hmm. at the same time, like you can maybe kind of tell that maybe not much thought was actually put into it beyond like gameplay. Like, why was this huge platform built? Well, it was built for you to fight this large <laughs> man who's You could say that. Like, let's, yeah. let's, I'll be real. Yeah, like, you know, I think, you know, with some Colossi, specifically 14 and 15, yes, it does seem like a real place where people could have lived. Mm -hmm. but there are some of them really where you know and all the love to the devs like you don't really get the feeling like they they kind of thought it up and like oh this was actually a, an aqueduct or this was the the, <laughs> the armory or i don't know um well you know yeah it's, it's, you mean di digital archaeology you mean you know uh I yeah suppose. yeah is you know mm -hmm. as 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 interesting and, and you know what's important is as i guess that you get a sense that it was used for something and not that you can figure out what it was actually used for, because maybe there was no really mind paid to that aspect of it. Yeah, I think though, with uh, I mean, with the first Colossus, you sort of like discover him up in this lair, which is just like built into the geography of the world. And then the second one, he's maybe you know walled off near the beach. Um, but Gaius really is the first one you encounter, I think, that has sort of this structure assigned to him in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and for me, that is why it, it always did feel like an alien ship because it feels like something that just dropped into this lake and appeared from somewhere uh, and serves the purpose to sort of like put him up on this pedestal and like frame the encounter. But I think that does make it feel fundamentally different from the first two. Well, I have a few uh, little riffs on this. So you were saying, um, first of all, I'll just say with Logan, and like I totally get that that's my first thing that I keep myself definitely anchored to just like, yeah, usually with games, uh, as much as there is narrative consideration, like the, you know, the the, the, the whole nature of the medium is that it's it's meant to, to, you know, things are designed with the idea of gameplay in mind very much, you know, like prominently. Um, so and then like the notion of going into, uh, you know, speculation about like p potential like narrative conceits for why things I should take the shape they do i actually found I, i've been mentioning this on the past couple of episodes of basically a few different interactive artistry podcasts is that like my thing that like i kind of come have come to peace with is that like it's it's basically as long as it's like enriching to go there and speculate even if it's it was not intentional on the part on the of the part of the creator it, it just ends up being something that just that it first of all the question of like uh the the the, the angle that like it prompted you to want to dive in um, is is basically like it's a, a try, it's like a, a success. The, like the artist has succeeded in created that mm -hmm. intrigue, which is good to acknowledge, and it's it's good to sort of fall into that. But then another layer is that like, um, uh, you know, as as like the exercise of of seeking meaning can can uh, even though the intention on the part of the creator was not there, and as long as you did don't dip into the whole thing of like, oh, I figured it out. This is what they were intending. I've like no, I'm like laying definitely making no claim of, of that and i'm sure neither of us here would would would, would say that oh this is the definitive thing because it's impossible and in fact that's what makes this so enduring and timeless that we can speculate this way so for me it's just like it's just worthwhile unto itself to do that even if it wasn't intended but um um so but then the second thing i want to have so for this particular structure is i want to take a couple of things i'm just going to gather a little bit of what each of you have said so nick said the thing about the spaceship um and then uh you know we were talking about the in logan was talking about um just like how it looks almost purpose-built and so for me because gaius i was just reading in the sort of uh sort of description of so gaius out of all the colossi he resembles a human the most you know and yeah. as much as we you know know we, we we get regular reminders that we are part of like the food chain we're part of nature we do have this sense of elevation of our ourselves as like the humanoids who received the little droplet from whatever entity on it or energy you think created us like that whole like we we fancy fancy ourselves more divine that's the that's the whole notion of like the humanoids that's why in like star trek and in star wars like we have it we it's it's like almost psychologically impossible for us to conceive of anything that isn't really humanoid because that's why we always portray aliens in this way so uh, i sort of looked at it from this angle and so the idea of like this ancient civilization building this platform of like oh the colossus that most resembles humans like like uh that has this mo this mo more humanoid than any of the other um colossi kind of um form 
and that's it actually just if like on the platform itself that's how you break his sword is there's that it almost looks like a sacrificial platform um so i, I have the feeling that gaius was um like elevated like a lot literally elevated a lot higher than than the other colossi and he had this sort of again that path that goes up it just feels like this road of sacrifices where like sacrificed people to be sacrificed were like led up and and placed on that platform for 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 him you know so that's just my any any thoughts on that anyone hmm yeah, that's. I mean, that's interesting. I hadn't really, for some reason, I, I always think about the Colossi as being fairly peaceful, uh, you know, as their default nature, and and not really aggressive. Like you, you sort of, you know, you're the aggressor, and it turns into an aggressive interaction. But as far mm -hmm. as thinking about other people being a sacrifice to him, um, that that is interesting to think about. I like the thought of like elevation, um, you know, above the others too, and and sort of the sacred altar. Um, mm. Yeah, no, it's an interesting thought exercise for sure. Uh, I think when I, you know, when I think about how the the forbidden lands, you know, when we do think about how they were used, and you look at the architecture, and we like we're saying, you sort of make presumptions and read into some of it about what it could be used for. Um, I never think about the colossi coexisting with that. I guess I think about it more as True. the forbidden lands being this this uh, you know place in this history and as its own people and everything. And then when Dorman was like split up into these creatures, then the sort of lost the class side became what they are now. And that that was maybe after or the cause of that fall of that civilization. That's why I think mm -hmm. I never, I never think about them interacting with anyone else. Yeah, uh, historically. I, I tend to agree with that. That's, that's valid. That's fair. I like that. Go for it, Logan. Uh, what, what's the subject? I mean, Oh, I was just if you want to change. No, 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 that's okay. Yeah. Um, it, it was the whole idea of like because you um and I'm I'm again I I sort of that's what's really great about sharing all these viewpoints is that's kind of where my my mind just locked into that just who knows just because of that yeah that humanoid imagery and the idea of elevating um and having this uh, yeah like to a degree art is obsessed like humans are obsessed with themselves in in a way like we, the human form is the most portrayed form in all of art um and so I figured like l linking that into why like uh you know a a possible narrative angle of why Gaius would be like um, mm. uh, have such. I mean, I think he has the most icon, like um, I, I would say one of the most impressive like plat like literal platforms. I don't mean yeah. to doing all these puns of like elevated platforms. <laughs> I'm not doing Gaius puns. I'm literally just trying no, to describe the thing. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. you're right though, and I think um, especially when we think about things from a perspective of art direction and not like function in the world, that if you have this very vertical humanoid figure that is reminiscent of like a roman statue or something i think putting it mm -hmm. up on a pedestal makes a lot of sense and it, it yeah it really works both in the you know in the approach like we're talking about and especially it's you know really dramatic when you're climbing up on him uh in this place so i think just yeah again from an like art direction standpoint I, i'm sure that was a lot of the motivation behind it and i think that probably did come from some human imagery and historical imagery of people being put up on a pedestal uh, whether that is a you know symbolic thing about you know elevating us and, and raising us beyond other creatures uh, or not, mm. I think it's a it makes for great visual direction. I dig it, I dig it. Any riffs on that one, Logan? No, I mean in terms of worshiping Gaius, um, that's I guess going to be maybe a subject for later. I think we should probably kind of get into the po the massive popularity of Gaius compared to the other Colossi oh, yeah. at a later <laughs> point. Maybe once yet once we're done. Once we're done with all the questions, um, maybe before we do the trivia, uh, we, we can kind of set aside the time to talk about that. Because I do have some things to say about that. Oh, you must. Absolutely. And I appreciate Logan, uh, like gently, like lane correction, just like, ah, gently steering <laughs> us back towards the questions, which oh, I no, appreciate. That's, no, no, that's not uh, what no, I'm I, trying to do. I'm, I'm just... No, no, I, love, <laughs> and I, I seriously appreciate it. It's really good. Um, and Because again, we can dip into tangents all we want, but it, the, the, the important of the sort of the, the you know, the, the movement towards like, yeah, just keeping that linear structure is also important. So, um, and I also just want to say, I know it's like, you, Logan, you've, um, we've had the questions before, but I actually dig the idea of like you, like me throwing it to you to ask them. So if we can do that, from like now on with the the colossal shows i kind of dig those like logan's questions right. i dig it all right man all right are we okay. moving on then yep absolutely well okay so we kind of covered the first two then so, you know we were talking about the location mm -hmm. um so now we're talking about uh i guess i think we're, we're gonna get into the appearance of the colossus third before we get into the actual fight i think that makes a lot a little more sense sure. so so um yeah let's just i guess Going into his appearance, um, all right. I guess he's a little like, um, yeah. Who's going first? Are we letting Nick go first? Is, oh, he's absolutely. The, he's go the for guest. Nick. Yeah. Yep. Oh, um, 
<laughs> as far as the appearance. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we've been talking about it already. I think, yeah, you got the koala face, you got the human body. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but uh, I, yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, he's just, he's really imposing. And I think it's, you know, with the, I, I guess you could sort of climb back down, but I, it was a, a place where I felt really like stuck, especially with him um, up in that pedestal. I think after Quadratus, you can always like ride away and, um, you know, and come back later. But here it feels like you're really stuck. And it's this very like David and Goliath imagery of this little oh, you know, big this tiny figure on this, you know, on this huge, huge imposing obstacle. And he's got a sword, which is a big difference as well, right? It's fighting something mm -hmm. that is not only this giant hulking mm -hmm. stone thing, but that has a weapon, um, even if it's just sort of an extension uh, of Gaius. Um, but yeah, I think it's just incredibly striking and, and having this backdrop of like the sky with the, you know, the sun like burning through the clouds and, just everything about it, I think, really the, the way it's introduced um, in that sense. I mean, the other the other ones are a little more uh, almost like cinematic in a way, where with um, Valis you see the tr like the trees shaking, and then you see a big foot come into frame, uh, mm. you know. And then um, uh, with Quadr Quadratus, it's like bursting through the wall. Those are like cool moments. But here, it's more about like building this mood and climbing up to this moment of of, of the reveal and the reveal is amazing and you have the backdrop of like i said the clouds you have the shrine in the background and i think just everything about that reveal really uh, makes the stand out in people's heads sort of regardless of what even happened or uh you know i know a lot of people had frustration there of trying to run up the sword and figure out the, the battle but i think it just stand the introduction makes it stand out in people's minds really intensely hmm I dig that, man. I dig that. Um, yeah. So for me, um, I I just wanted to just draw some, just like park the car a little bit. The an the analysis uh, bus to a bus at the uh, uh, the fact that like when we see him, he's basically like broken, like he's almost mm -hmm. disassembled, you know. Um, which I I've I've always thought of it as like you know when you are puppeting, like you know how D Dorman in some ways you could be seeing seen him as like puppeting these things, you know, as in or that the, their energy, Dorman's energy has infected them or something, um, to unlock his power. So I had the idea of um, him resembling, you know, when you drop a puppet, like, and the strings, everything just like <laughs> oh, yeah, loose sure. and just like falls into that mound. And I just had that idea of like, um, you know, Dorman, like, uh, like, like pulling up at the strings. And what's interesting is I took a screen capture, which I shared to the Facebook um, of if you are, uh, and this is obviously, look, it's just, it's probably like beacons that I either are indicating, indicating to other Colossi or something I'm, I'm not getting or just thinking about right now. But you know, there's, there's like those vortexes in the sky um, yep. when you're fighting mm -hmm. him. Yeah, sure. and I just imme I immediately thought of just like puppet strings, uh, and and his his general resemblance too, especially when he's like he has this this posture, which actually helps you later when you're on his back, uh, to sort of stay stable and recover your grip strength. Is that he leans forward so you can like re release your grip. He actually has this um, stoop, and he sort of lurches forward the same way that puppets do. Um, uh, um, you know, um, when you yeah, in like puppet shows, because that's how the usually the the puppeteer's hands are angled. Is like the the it's just this this sense of how is this. Thing Thing keeping itself up and um it's it's very like yeah eerie and in many ways like he can he's he's kind of one of the spookiest i think looking because especially when he just like locks you with his eyes it's just like oh shit you know yeah and, and he doesn't really sort of like he doesn't really fade into the environment like the other ones do no. uh he you know he stands out and once he's like awake um then it's just the sort of thing you have to deal with it's not just an extension of the environment that you're in hmm yeah, you literally can't run. Uh, even though there's that great little um, kind of courtesy, I would call it, in the environment design, where if you fall off the edge, you have a minor heart attack because you think you're going to fall into the water. But there's that sub platform that you're like, ah, oh. right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of cool. But uh, what did you think, Logan? That's a great observation about him resembling a puppet or even a toy. I mean, that's I've never heard that before, and that really, mm. it really makes a lot of sense. You know, I mean, his feet are like they're orbs, they're like little balls. Um, mm. So yeah, like him being a toy, that's that's a that's just a very good point. Um mm. and yeah, in terms of his appearance, I mean I, I've always kind of considered him one of the more unique colossus uh compared to the other ones. Um, you know, I think I would say there are a few colossi that really kind of have these designs that are kind of separate, you know, Gaius is one, Kuramori is one, um, Phalanx is one, you could say Malice is another one. Mm. Um, but beyond those four, there tends to be a bit more of like a unified um design behind most of them yeah um but yeah i mean guys you know he's he's super tall he's got like so much kind of sticking out of him and he's got yeah. like his arms like 
his arms have like you know if you look at him like in profile or, or silhouette his arms have like all these bumps and, and kind of weird construction going on mm-hmm. and, and i feel like a lot of the other class aren't like that he has the weird abdomen that is like smaller than the rest you know it's like he's got an hourglass figure you could say he's a he's a crossfit guy <laughs> he, he hits that crossfit yeah. pretty hard yeah <laughs> yeah so his his appearance is like super interesting to me um and you know i, th- I tend to think that he looks like a monkey um a, a, a of other bit. animals you could yeah you, you could say koala that was always what i thought um mm. just from the first time I played the game. well um just to jump in and support you from the from the wiki we have gaius has the furthest reach of any colossi ex- um, excluding the four that use projectile attacks uh, due to both its height and the length of its sword so and he's just insanely long limbs i think he's got the longest limbs and maybe next to malice um so yeah i just wanted to uh, add that little and, appendice yeah yeah, and I think you feel it too when he swings the sword at you, especially when you sort of line it upright, you know, as the first step to actually like unlocking the next part of the battle is having him do that sort of giant overhand swing and then feeling the distance with the sword. Like that's just another amazing moment, which then leads to you running up the sword, which is maybe the most sort of iconic moment in the whole game. Um, so everything about that just feels dramatic. Uh, and again, some of the sort of, um, you know, I got into it a little bit in the book, but there was decisions made to make the Colossi, you know, move sort of slow and hulking in a way to to give you the feeling of mass. And I think the way that he swings the sword is still the sort of huge wind up. And it's, it's a slow swing, but you just feel the momentum of it uh, and feel the impact and everything. So it's, uh, mm. it's one where they, yeah, they just really sort of did it right in terms of communicating all these feelings about the encounter. Absolutely. Um, quick little programming thing to just jump in. And Nick, how much? How long do we have you for? Just to make sure that we uh, allow, like, allocate time to like ask. Oh, you I'm I'm questions. fine actually. Yeah, my my letter okay. plans got cancelled, so we're good. Too easy. Oh. Awesome. Okay. Cool. I'll I'll throw it back to you, Logan. So I made you wake up early for nothing. Oh, you're fine, dude. <laughs> chill. It's oh. all chill, man. It's all chill. Go for it. Yeah, I mean, um, that's before we get into, I guess, talking about the battle. I guess that's. Hmm, do I have anything else to say about his appearance? Um. Mm-hmm. I just think that that his uniqueness is a lent a lot to his popularity, but we're gonna yeah. talk more about his appearance, or if we want to get into the yeah, actual. Yeah, sure. Stuff. Um, it's interesting. Uh, so appearance, because obviously that we don't have a noises section. So I'm, uh, I, you, you know, like um, Logan, we we usually dip into like we just sort of read off trivia down the line. But I figured if it if it comes up organically, it's better to just like say the thing when it's relevant instead of just like yeah. So we have Gaius makes a lot of different noises, as with most colossi, it bellows and roars a lot. Some of the noises it makes are similar to those made by roaring bears. And I and I, I remember, um, he, you know, in terms of sound design. He like the lurch, especially in the remake, like the lurching kind of cracking and like, like it, it very much feels like a, like, is like a probably at least so far as, as I've been going through that, like the, the most impressive sounding of the Colossae, definitely. Um, and then uh, I have to, I, I gotta go cover these because for the interest of comprehensiveness <laughs> for posterity. So Gaius uh, is potentially the furriest of all the 16 Colossae. <laughs> Sorry. Do you want to just do all the trivia or? Yeah, let's do it. Why not? So most uh, most of its body that isn't covered by armor has fur on it, and even when the armor on its arm is broken, it can be seen that beneath the armor is more fur. Going by this, it is possible that most of Gaius's body is covered in fur rather than in specific places like the other colossi. Uh, there is, however, a bald patch of tough skin on the inside of its right arm, which I found super interesting because it looked like <laughs> super. This is like like super zoomed in, but again, this is I've I've said this like Logan with um uh, the quadratus. I was like like with these episodes it's the idea that um you know when this is discovered many years from now of like oh the comprehensive volumes the leather bound <laughs> you know who knows if we'll get we'll get a leather bound thing happening um you know like this is a, like be all end all discussion on this on Gaius and it's like why not just dive into everything so um do you want to read any of the trivia buddy yeah yeah i mean well well for nick i guess you know just to explain what we're doing is um we're actually going on the team eco uh, wiki mm. they have you know a whole trivia bullet bullet point list of trivia on cool, that yeah, is that's often great. yeah Super fairly interesting yeah hmm. well, so i what, guess to start bef- yeah sorry go ahead no i was just gonna say before we i guess get into actually talking about the fight itself which i think we're probably gonna spend a while talking as since we've already covered some of these points we're gonna just yeah. rattle off the rest of course 
too um, easy. All right. Well, I can um, take that. We'll go from so from the start. It says obviously, yeah. But yeah. So um, I'll, I'll breeze over it. I won't read the full thing in full if we've covered it already. Uh -huh. So it says um, guys is uh, only one of the three colossus that wield a weapon. The others two being Valus and Argus. Um, uh, guys is also the only one of the three that will never drop its weapon. Uh, Valus drops its weapon uh -huh. during its death sequence, and Argus is disarmed by Wanda during their battle. This is likely due to the fact that guys is weapon. Well, it is actually physically part of his body and drops <laughs> yeah. onto his right hand. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. So awesome. So you can take the next one if you want, um, Logan. Well, uh, we know he has the furthest reach. Uh, we know he resembles a human. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go right on to saying uh, the yep. stats. He is 97 feet or 29.6 meters tall. Uh, and according to the wiki, he's the third tallest colossi after Malus and Quadratus, though I know you and Naz kind of had this conversation last episode. It was like, bullshit. Is, we had a big Australian yeah, is, like, is, is Quadratus. <laughs> <laughs> is Quadratus really that tall? Which um, I guess if you do look at the, the size comparisons, um, Gaius does seem a bit taller than Quadratus. Quadratus mm -hmm. is definitely, um, as, as we both mentioned, or at least I definitely mentioned it in my little section, Quadratus mm -hmm. definitely tends to seem a lot smaller than, than they actually are. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Gaius is, uh, looks to be a little bit taller. For sure. For sure. I'll take the next one. Um, so Gaius is one of the more popular colossi among fans, due in part to its great height and the fact that the fight essentially is a death match between two swordsmen. This is what building on what Nick said about uh, the David and Goliath kind of vibe. Um, held within the confines of the lofty arena wherein Gaius resides, uh, Gaius's popularity may also be due to the fact that many players view the fight against Gaius as the first proper fight in the game. Valus and Quadratus are seen somewhat as training colossi in that they are more designed to allow the player to become accustomed to the controls as well as the game's mechanics and physics. Gaius, by comparison, is a tougher opponent, um, especially given that the puzzle of breaking its armor is trickier to discover than either Valus or Quadratus witnesses, which is totally valid. So, awesome. Go for it, Logan. Okay, right, uh, yep, he said he makes some noises. He's the furriest. Uh, yep. He's the only bipedal colossi. It doesn't have hands. Uh, its right <laughs> hand is connected directly to its sword, and its left is like a stump with some stone armor protruding from it, which appears vaguely resembling uh, very crude fingers. Yeah, you know, I guess I never really paid attention too much to his left hand. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's real. I really never did, now that I think about it. It really isn't all that hand-like. Yeah, I, I mean, guess I kind of assumed. Yeah, I'm realizing there's a fine line between, like, trivia, like, trivia meaning, like, things that most people never <laughs> bother to notice. Uh, but it's, yeah. it's, in it's interesting <laughs> when, you, when you actually get into it, because it is, like you're saying, it's things that I, like, never thought twice about. It, and it's like, oh, actually... Mm -hmm. People are being very comprehensive about it, which is which is cool. Mm. This is cool, yeah. Awesome. I'll grab the next one. So Gaius and Valus are the only two colossi with major sigils on their arms, but those are exclusive to hard mode. Argus and Malus come close, but they have minor sigils on their arms, not major. Well, that's just very like dry. Like that's like an academic <laughs> that's like that's that Nick, do you remember in school when you just read like a useless medical fact that you're like, I wasted three point five seconds of my life on this <laughs> and I, I just I, felt that way. I call that <laughs> chemistry. <laughs> all of yeah, no, no offense <laughs> yeah no go ahead nick no no, no. oh no i was just saying yeah I, I call that all of all of chemistry chemistry was an entirely useless thing for me um <laughs> but, but no you're I, I know what you mean i'll start putting that uh, headline together um and i'll yeah. post it vengefully to like chemistry weekly or whatever and i'll just okay. be like by the way nick nick satna you know no, he doesn't like you Not i fan. don't like you either <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> listen Let's Dr. Avazan. Avazan, thank you. Wow. Oh, Nick, would you have gotten that one in terms of the deep, the deep Star Wars lore? <laughs> no, not not that deep, cut. That's too deep for me. I'm a wanted man in 12 systems. Okay. Along with Quadratus and Wonder. Oh, I'm stealing. Look at me. I'm a freaking trivia thief. That's go right. for it, uh, uh, Logan. <laughs> yeah, you can you can actually get a little picture of this if you go on Guys' wiki page that um he was another one of these Sackaboy costumes no, in Little Big right. Planet, which is very cute. Um, I love that they did... Uh, Team Eco content for that game. I, I didn't buy it, even though I had Little Big Planet, but um, I, it was really cool that they did do it. They had a lot of nice stickers that you could post that was like all this weird Shadow of the Colossus art. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's it's a never ending um, story. Let's just put it that way. Oh, quick little shout out because we we talked about it. It's just like me quickly adding a an, a retroactive appendices. So for me, the approach uh, to the um, I forgot to talk about this, but like because of that sort of swampy kind of vibe, I just felt total Atreus. Um, so Atreus, um, Atreyu. Uh, thanks, God of War. Uh, Atreyu and uh, Artax vibes, like approaching Morla, the giant kind of uh, tortoise in um, a never ending story. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. The, I, 
got those vibes big time with like the swampy kind of surrounds and uh yeah so i figured i'd throw that back there and <laughs> so the last trivia is in the ps4 remaster a trophy can be earned from defeating gaius without shattering his wrist guard then i am going to add one wow. so if anyone is my is um uh looking after the wiki you got to add this one so gaius uh marius is the he, he was a roman general and statesman and he um he was called the third founder of rome so third colossus mm -hmm. third founder of rome there's your little connection to the number three there with uh Bam. nomenclature mm -hmm. oh cool never knew that too one too easy there you go booyah the, the, uh, the more you know and i guess i guess another one that i'll add uh from my book which comes from some of the research i did interviewing people who were involved uh which i was told by kyle schubel who was one of the u.s producers on the game um is that this fight is actually where the name of the game comes from the western name of the game uh um, yeah that was really just, interesting just the way that the yeah the way that the uh, shadow of the sword basically swooped over the player um, and and just the impact that that had and felt like a giant plane or a two by four or something like coming over you and that inspired that moment of like yeah just shadow the colossus because i know that sounded like the, wow. the u.s marketing team was struggling a bit and um you know because the original title is, is quite different of wanda and kyozu and you know what to do with that but i think it actually worked out really well um and, and came from this fight mm. oh that's awesome fantastic Coolie coolies. All right, um, Logan, you can lead us into the next question. All right, yeah, well, the next question is, you know, about the battle itself, which, um, you know, it was a, a thing in third person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, you, it's, it's fine. okay. You can, it's it's, fine. it doesn't sound weird to me. You're good. <laughs> you give a beautiful rundown of it in the book, so I guess I should just throw it to you so you can parrot some of that uh, and maybe add some new. Oh no! I well, I, yeah. It's been maybe it's been a while since I've looked at it, so I, I, I don't even know what my <laughs> my rundown was. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess the fight. It's interesting having this multi this multi step thing, and like the wiki sort of talked about, it's the it's the first sort of true challenge where it's a bit of a puzzle, and you have to figure out how to like break the wristband so you can get up far enough, and then you have to run up the sword and a lot of that is like a sort of a, a distance thing which doesn't quite come up quite as often in, in the game i think but you have to sort of figure out how far away from him to be to get him to swing his sword in the right way but you know you have, you have to swing the sword and yet close enough to be able to have enough time to run up the sword um and that's you know that's after you shadowed the wristband so there's a lot of uh sort of puzzly steps leading up to it um and mm. then once you actually get up the sword and get up there then the rest of it i think is is fairly straightforward um but uh, yeah, not too much okay. else to say off the top of my head. That's okay. We'll do a couple of different roundtables. So, what did you think, uh, Logan, of the fight? I certainly, um, you're certainly right, Nick, in your book when you say that both the moment of running up his sword and then the moment of being on top of Gaius's head are some of the best in the entire game. Mm. Being on Gaius's head, especially in the remake. Um, the shrine of worship and and you know sort of you get really a, a, a scale of of how big the forbidden lands are mm. um is really just really amazing um and you know that certainly based on that i can see why guys are so popular um for me i believe the first time i fought Gaius, i must have broken his armor on accident <laughs> Um, oh, really? Because okay. I really don't remember it being a difficult fight but then i think the first time i played it on ps3 um i think i might have had to get my brother i had i might have had to ask my brother like what the frick do you think i should do in this fight um <laughs> and i think he managed to figure it out luckily but i know it took me like a long time i couldn't figure it out on ps3 mm -hmm. so oh. yeah this is guys was was maybe in my ps3 playthrough one of the more difficult he was vexing so i think yeah they, they all took me a while i think um okay. but yeah i mean it's it's just i love jumping from the arm to the stomach is you know that's like kind of a a very kind of classic like fighting a giant thing that maybe you don't get to do on so many of the other classes actually jump from one part of it like across to another part of it mm. um, yeah so the I humanoid really, then, shape then, really yeah. lends itself to that yeah and then you have to jump back um <laughs> and, and i think that's actually the part that you're sort of trained for on the the path leading up to it when you have to mm -hmm. hang backwards from those rocks and jump over to the main part of the saucer before you climb up there so i think it's giving you a bit of training uh but it's funny because now i never i never do that anymore i only i i climb up and then i i like drop down from up on his shoulders sort of um uh -huh. so that path to me i never really think about anymore but that that definitely i think is the way that you're supposed to encounter it Mm, yeah, it seems that way with the... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Nick. 
Oh no 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 that's it. Yeah. I was just going to say yeah it seems that way with with uh, you know I'm looking at some of the concept sketches and it's very much um you know you're looking at uh, how many I wonder if they had the idea of making them even larger I, I wonder if that was one thing that <laughs> um, they explored because it seems as though if you look at some of these concept sketches like there's there's the whole notion that maybe someone will eventually do like or, you know, some kind of spiritual sequel where they make these things like literally like you know maybe the, the size of that the titans were in um uh, God of War three, I think, was uh, probably some of the largest like um, meshes ever created for a game. I don't know because uh, it looks like it, there's even like mini rooms and like different, literally like a, a whole series of platforming that that um, that had you know just a, just a, a, an idea that I had. Um, but in terms of the fight, um, so for me, um, I'll, I'll get my my sort of my minutia out of the way. Nick, I've been doing this thing uh, every uh, every every Colossus just picking out like that the, the particular wabi-sabi kind of aspect and just like singling sure. out that one je ne sais quoi type thing so for me uh, i'll catch you up with with chevalis it was how when he's he's killed like it's just that that uh, minutiae of like his his um hands which are, yeah, i get that so again going back to never ending story there's that uh the the rock biter who's like oh these hands look super strong and um they, they don't look like they could let go of anything you know and so the sad thing is that he lost his friends and like there's that sort of uh, that sort of um, pathos there um and the idea that like literally you just look at valis and he has these insanely like beefy strong arms you just think that nothing could ever like have them like ever like part like they just grabbing the, the stuff and so when you see those those fingers like unwrap it's just this super and like letting the, the club fall through them like that's it just has that pang so each of the colossus have had this like emotional pang for me and then quadratus is um you know when a, a horse or a cow is wounded they'll fall onto their forward ankle and their a wrist right, will right. bend yeah it'll bend inwards very sickeningly and it's just like immediate pang of just like empathy so for me um this was probably the the most like visceral for me because i like i remember from alien you know when when um uh he's just sort of grabbing towards his stomach and i i, I did something a bit like unwittingly sadistic i went for his head first and then that one w w faded away like he was obviously shaking that off and people have described that as like get away from a head type thing but like something that just taps into something maybe primal and, and really f like frightening is the idea of something entering through your belly button uh which is like in like neo the matrix and everything or, or even coming out of you and so him because he's got these big uh you know this these big arms that he can't quite like reach his stomach he's reaching for you and he's like really distressed and he's like clawing at you but he can't really reach you and you're just this implacable kind of tick just making its way towards his stomach it's just like Ugh, you know so um and then when like obviously there's nothing you can do and you slay him and just that blood just jutting jut jutting out from him um it's just yeah like that was my for me like yeah like that that's probably like what sort of overtook me was that aspect but now it's time to make time for like i did find it initially pretty frustrating not figuring out what like what shut the fuck up dorman like okay i get it you want me to break his armor and i was like firing arrows at this fucking armor and i was a like a lot of people really hate the the dorman hints is, is what i, I, found. I should probably I, take I... them i'm gonna turn them off yeah yeah i i forget where i think that was like in kotaku's review where they were like definitely need to turn the door oh, in. It's, bro, like, bro, uh, bro, 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 bro. it's like <laughs> listen motherfucker oi calm your fucking farm you know that's my australian coming out <laughs> calm your farm uh excuse me but anyway uh, please continue logan <laughs> i am very composed right now no man, that's you know you're the one who's talking i interrupted you <laughs> no, yeah sorry there you go see i tried to throw it I, there's nowhere i can hide um so no but yeah that, those are the main two for me was that initial frustration um and what i did is like i'm looking through the strategies here and i i, I will admit i just camped under his, I, it was like shelter like i was just sort of burrowed myself underneath his sort of arm brace type thing that very fashionable thing that his grandparents got him one day that he was like you trust me you look good guys trust me they're gonna love you at the prom and they're like mom you know just like this really a horribly imbalanced like you know asymmetrical fashion accessory you know um uh, so yeah so i just sort of hung out under that i was like okay literally what do i do now and um i actually tried for a long time to not like i didn't i was like shut up dorman i'm not gonna break the armor you're an idiot stupid demon man and so i i i jumped i kept trying to jump from his arm to his leg and then climb up um I did make it though to to his leg, but I I don't think yeah there's no way really to climb up um if you haven't bro broken his brace is that correct Nick? Uh well I know you can sort of get the the sword to like fling you up in the air um and if you, there's ways you can uh you know if you 
I, I don't know how much it's something you can just discover, but if you know what you're trying to do, um, I mean, I've seen videos of, yeah, sort of the sort of flicking you up in the air and then like catching them on the shoulder and you can do some acrobatics. I don't really know what the method is that the trophy is tied to though, specifically. I, oh, I am okay. never, never going to try that sword jump. Um, yeah. I don't think I'm, I'm going to do well at it and I don't plan on ever trying. Um, I just want to share something with you guys I've been doing with like Shadow Dome, for example, is I like to everything, all these beautifully evocatively named, you know, uh, nomenclature is one of my passions as well. So like, I always find this with things that you love so much, you feel secure in yourself enough to make fun of them. <laughs> so I like ha have been taking each of them and being like, what's 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 a riff I can do here? So with like, there's a, uh, a, a Jaeger in, in um, Pacific Rim called Mammoth Apostle. I was like, oh, that sounds amazing. Um, but what, how would I decoolify that as a well Malamute uh, apostrophe? There you go, done. It's not. It's not cool anymore. So for me, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna ruin. I'm gonna. Ru I'm gonna ch attempt to ruin guys for you. He looks like a, a gray Grinch from like Doctor Seuss. Like an Ar armored Grinch is basically my name for him. So armored Grinch. You like that, Logan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I, are you gonna rename all the colossi like this? Yes, duh. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I like to have my little hobbies on the side. But um, no, uh, the th thing is though, and no, no, this is again segueing into something serious though, because you could like, especially going into humanoid shapes. It's very easy to pull off a cool looking quadruped beast. And as you said, Logan, you know, they do dip into, um, yeah, like not homogeny, but they do at some point there's there's a pattern to the design. And Gaius, like, he there's, there was there would have been the design potential to make him come across as goof as goofy looking because he's got these like, like arms and everything but he, he as you said <laughs> he is yeah but it's like goofy in that sort of frightening way uh you know <laughs> it, it's really super i think it's probably aesthetically one of my favorites definitely up there so um uh yeah so any other uh, riffs on the fight uh nick um for yourself um oh, i i mean I, I don't know if we're do, so we do we talk about the ending separately yeah, I suppose, no, yeah, I, there's the fight. I, and the end. I sort of dipped into both, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> I think we had a disagreement there, but... Oh, sorry about that. Logan, did you want to go fight, then ending? No. Oh, I, I screwed up. I, I apologize. <laughs> Nick, we'll just... I think we'll just let you say whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, I was just going to say, too, it's... um, There is sort of, uh, I don't know, a fun moment in trying to, uh, you know, after after he falls, of trying to escape the usual, like, black tentacles, um, and this time actually jump off the edge um, and yeah. try to, like, make it back down to the water. Like, it feels like there is more of a means of escape because you sort of, you know, you can you can cover a lot of distance by falling. And I feel like I have gotten to the edge and jumped and maybe been caught in the air. I don't think I've made it down to the water, but I could be just imagining that. I don't know how far I've actually made it. Oh, wow. but That's um, interesting. I never even tried that. Yeah, it feels like yeah. you can like there's a meaningful path to like running away. Of course you can't, but uh, there's that you know that futile interactivity that we've talked about um, I think before. But mm -hmm. um, that's an interesting concept that is you know in play there as much as anywhere um, that you think you can get away, but uh, you still I never can. Mm. Wow. Yeah, can't escape the guilt. Um, yeah. Any riffs on that one there, Logan? No, I mean, you know, um, I think stabbing and killing guys is interesting compared to the others because you got such a tiny head. Um, yeah. Yeah, like it, it, it definitely you might affect you more that way because it's like you're really like stabbing this like, I don't know, you know, it's more humanoid and even the head is, is more humanoid just because it's small. Um, yeah. So yeah, in that respect, I, I always tend to feel a little weirder stabbing him because it's like, it just... Yeah, that's that's just why. Just, just, just the you know, like um, I don't know if you guys have done any like uh, looking into or maybe even seen a, a, a no play N O H. It's the Japanese um, kind of uh, performance art, and they have these masks that are mono expression. There's no like articulation yeah. on the mask, but they're actually sculpted in a way that sculpted in a way that depending on the lighting and the angle, they'll I'll actually send you guys a, a photo of this. Um, it's it's incredible. Like it's just viewed from two different angles. This thing can look either like big Begging for mercy, or super aggressive, or very frightened, and and just the the ambiguity of, of the completely round eyes at, at different angles. Obviously, if when viewed from below, there is that intimidation factor, and this is something in like filmmaking school. They say everything from filled from below is to make the of the you know the, the subject of that yeah. shot look very oppressive and, and looming. But when you're above and it's looking a looking down for, uh, when it's looking up at you from above, it, it looks pit, like pitiful, you know, and and frightened and and um. 
And I definitely got those vibes from, especially when you realize, oh, it looks so far away, so colossal. And then when you're up there, like its head is like, as you said, smaller. And it just has that, yeah, as you said, um, Logan, more, more humanoid sort of, yeah, the empathy just kicking in for sure. Too easy. Okay. Well, um, I think that's, is that all of the questions, Logan? Yeah, that's all. Amazing. Fantastic. Well, we're sitting on um, just a, just coming up to the hour and 30. Um, let's have a look at this. Jump into some of the, if that's okay with you, and we have a few questions for you, Nick, from sure. um, Reddit forward slash Shadow of the Colossus. So, um, hey, do you want to take a few of these, Logan, so we can do continue our back and forth? Uh, with, uh, I tag don't team? have the link. I think you do the questions, then I'm just going to talk sure. about um, okay. why guys are so massively popular. I'll just get into that after. <laughs> You must, you must. Okay, so we have um, a really awesomely uh, user, uh, username, user named uh, Ueda Shadow asks, I would like to ask Nick and Albert the same question. What would you want more, a prequel or a sequel of Shadow of the Colossus? I know Eco is considered a sequel of Shadow of the Colossus, but I mean the direct sequence of events in the Forbidden Lands. Uh, what's happened to Mono and Wanda, uh, or what happened before the arrival of Wanda and Mono to the Forbidden Lands? And if Nick at some point considered writing the script for a possible adaptation of Shadow of the Colossus to the big screen. <laughs> uh, so, And he's given his name, so Michael Nade uh, or Nadais. So uh, I'll hand that to you, uh, Nick. Sure. Um, I mean, I think as far as the prequel sequel question, I think uh, you could argue that Last Guardian um, is a prequel, uh, and yeah. Eco, I think, is obviously, uh, but not obviously, but is you know, likely comes afterward at some point. Um, so I think there is sort of an established chronology there. As far as what I would want, um, I mean, I wasn't even sure if I wanted you know the recent remake uh, or not, and I still have slightly mixed feelings about it, but um. I don't think I'd really, I mean, I think I'd want a, a different story, maybe something closer to Last Guardian, maybe that has, uh, you know, some more ties into what could eventually, like, you know, maybe it's the the uh, banishment of Dorman or something, and maybe what that meant before he went to the lands. I don't think I'd really want to see anything else in that space, or necessarily with those characters mm -hmm. even, but I think as far as planting a little a few more seeds or you know it's like i don't want to i don't want to unveil the mystery but i'm fine having a few more theoretical things to to tie into this world to think about like i think eco the the connection between eco and shadow is the perfect level of that sort of thing for me of like a a presumed connection that seems overt but might not mean anything at all but it's nice to not ever have that stated canonically or not um mm -hmm. i don't know what, what do you think about albert like what would you would you want more of this game in a sense yeah well, I'll just I'll put it this way. Hypothetically, say you know, um, and, and though it, it likely won't be this exact entity, but say if uh, Fumito's properties at one point had like a you know 2012 era takeover that like Disney had with Star Wars, where now we're exploring everything, we're about to have like a oh, uh, you know a prequel of like Han Solo, and everything is going to be demystified to an extent. I just think if if that were to happen, and I was like, okay, well this has happened, and a lot of people had to come to peace with like, yeah, everything's going to be mined now. We're going to get everything. Thing, every kind of iteration and so if that did happen i would all all that i would like plead to the sort of um uh extended universe deities is that uh, uh things were um basically given like just the most beautiful uh, dignity filled and respect filled uh, uh uh treatment and so what i would like to see is if you did say for example explore as uh, we'd been touching on earlier about the earlier civilizations and if we did um uh, end up diving into some of that which again like nick even if even as i dive into this i'm I've always I've got this this sort of this uh, niggling kind of um, uh, just truth right like at right on my shoulder being like this will never happen. What are you talking <laughs> about, man? This is like like freaking Smithsonian preserved, preserved like nothing like no one's gonna hopefully let's just say like you don't want to tempt fate, but hopefully never touch this. But um, to wrap that part of the question up is is if it were either for a sequel or prequel to Eco or um, Shadow of the Colossus or Last Guardian, I, I just hope that uh, um, it, it is done with respect. So I don't have any, um, so for you, not Michael, I don't have any specific plot things that I would like to see followed through, even though part of me does have like a little, my ear perks up a little bit with the intrigue that could be um, in sort of mind with uh, the, the, the ancient civilizations with uh, uh, that did build these structures. So that's interesting to me uh, if they right. had a way of still maintaining that, in, uh, that interest. Um, but yeah, so yeah, but that's, it's just sort of an expression of that. And then the next thing, um, uh, Nick, was your uh, screenplay for Shadow <laughs> of the Colossus. <laughs> uh, I mean, there has been talk about Shadow of the Colossus becoming a movie for, you know, pretty much since yeah. its release, I think on and off. Um, it's it's i mean 
it still seems crazy to me. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of very iconic imagery that could be cool. But when you take interaction out of it, like everything that makes it what it is is lost, really. So it just I, I don't think it works at all uh, in the same way as a film. Um, of course, I would still be excited and interested to see it. Um, I don't think I'd, I'd have interest in writing it because, I, yeah, I think like we sort of talked about with the last part, it's like demystifying things isn't interesting to me. And even if you made a wordless film uh, without the interaction, that isn't interesting to me either. So it's the same reason why, really why I haven't read the, you know, like the eco book. Um, and, and maybe I should, and I've been told it's interesting, but it's still, it's still like a fan book. It's not, you know, official lore or anything. Mm. So um, okay. I don't know. I mean, I appreciate them thinking that's something that I could do, but it's just <laughs> only not... you could do it. Nick. I know. You, yeah. You are the chosen uh, one. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to be party to making it a film because it just seems like a, I don't know. I don't know. It feels like a weird disconnect to me. Um, yeah. I think, I think that's the ultimate uh, uh, thing really is to say that, well, the thing really just is complete unto itself. And, and I think, you know, they say oh, always with the adaptation, we want to be so respectful. We want to reimagine it. In a way. So, uh, maybe the highest form of respect is restraint, <laughs> you know, Yeah, maybe. You know? I mean, and there was a reason uh, there was like an, a, a, a tweet or something by the guardian saying like, why are all video games film? Why are all video game films bad? Because of course that's been the refrain, you know, mm. really since they became a mainstream thing. And it, to me, it's like, well, games are interactive and that's it. That's like the only answer. Like you can, mm. you can, Build, you know, you can build a new story in the world of a game, but that that's not what what makes the best game special. Um, mm. I have um, I have a bit of ta uh, tangentially related trivia to this exact uh, subject. I recently watched, out of all things, because you were saying, yeah, the refrain is that video game films are horrible. Um, but I will say, look, uh, and maybe I'll this this may be to a chorus of cackles of laughter if you haven't seen it yet. But uh, the sequel to Jumanji. Uh, the Welcome to the Jungle. Have you guys seen that by any chance? No, no I, heard I, it's a lot of, I heard it's a lot of fun, though. Um, okay, let's just put it... I don't know. If, okay, I'll, fuck it, I'll just tell you. So it's beautiful. It's insanely beautiful and earnest. It feels like a 90s movie out of time, like it was filmed um, out of time. And, um, okay, I'll just say this now, because uh, I know... Because I, I, just for the connective tissue, I, 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 you know, subject matter. So at the very beginning of the game, of, at the very beginning of the film, uh, there's a Fumito Ueda shout out. So Yes, there is. Yeah. Oh, really? Thank it was you. a Sony, it was a Sony um, production that's oh. right sony production so uh now nick it's up to you would you like us tick tock tick would you like us to reveal what the shout out is or do you want to see it for yourself uh i mean i do plan to watch the film at some point um All right. but but i'm happy to hear it spoiled too if you think it's uh, if you think it would intrigue listeners to go watch the film oh i don't know logan i'm gonna throw it's it not... to you i can't i can't make this choice it's it's, it's too not hard. very <laughs> impressive to be honest I, okay I'm, yeah fine okay so, so it um you noticed it aspect... too when you saw it logan yeah. Uh, I noticed it in the trailer. It was in the trailer. Oh, really? Oh, okay, my wow. God. Look at you with your actually, Hawkeyes. Actually, um, well, I only noticed it because Gen Design actually tweeted about it. <laughs> oh, how did I miss all yeah. of this? This is crazy. They did. Yeah, they did. All right. All right. Well, you know what? I think we've primed them enough. Um, go for it. Uh, like if you want to see it, like literally it's, um, but you know, I, cause I, my walls of, I've been tr is continuously trying to just make sure my walls of adult jadedness don't immediately get built seven feet thick and just letting no new experiences in. And I had seriously my walls all the way up. Cause I love obviously the original Jumanji. Um, um, but yeah, uh, it is the best video game film so far to me ever made if it counts yeah definitely it's so um needless to say it was written by uh, La um, lawrence kasdan's son john kasdan oh. and uh this just it's essentially you uh, the the kind of um thesis of it is they become uh, like the characters step into whatever realm they need to whether it's a, a new environment or a new persona they they step into these challenging situations uh specifically designed for each of them to grow as people um and you would never imagine this from like all the kind of crazy sort of super poppy kind of um very rapidly edited together and like ah oh, flashy kind of sounds kind of um editing right. and with, with the trailers so like just separate that from entirely separate from that entirely and just say hey this is a, a 90s movie that happened to be filmed in 2016 you know cool that's high praise okay too easy. All right, well, we'll jump well, into the. Oh yeah, go ahead, so, Logan. For for the record, the the shout out is there's a poster for the Last Guardian on a wall. I really don't think it's it's worth a billion. Oh. <laughs> Fine, <laughs> that's, that's Nick, pretty Nick, interesting Nick, though. 
Okay. Yeah, uh, but it's not, not only cool. actually, Nick, um, it has three shots. There's like three held, like not yeah. like a mere glimpse. Like the woman is like. So yeah, go ahead, um, Logan. I know. I, I'm gonna say I think he has two posters. I think he has one two. Is on the back of there his are door, two, and then and then one is on his wall. I think. Wow. Yeah. So the main character. So there you go. Weird. <laughs> It's really, really cool and beautiful. And again, there's there's a there's a shared narrative aspect which obviously we won't we won't spoil. But um, I'll sure. maybe with riff with Logan with that later. But do do you secretly harbor resentment towards us for revealing that at all, Nick? No, 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 no. That's that's fine. <laughs> Especially now knowing what it is, I think I might have been disappointed if it was some more like <laughs> yeah. clever esoteric reference. So okay, okay. Oh yeah, no, that's all good. Yeah, too easy. Awesome. Well, we have another one. So from user official Kevsters. Um, this is my question for him. Full stop. Ooh, moody. I love these. Like, uh, you know, um, when people don't add certain aspects of like grammar and stuff, it just creates the mood. So, what does he think of think of the remake? This is English. I love it. Uh, for PS4, uh, any changes to the overall game that he likes slash dislikes? Also, my name is Kevin Robertson. Thank you. <laughs> so. Uh... Yeah, well, thanks for the question, Kevin. Um, I mean, I, I, I still have trouble actually like summarizing it because I do have a lot of thoughts and a lot of conflicted thoughts. And, you know, we chatted a bit uh, the, on the show before and now I've played a bunch more and then I did the 10 and a half hour slow jam, which is sort of us like just just really getting into it for, you know, very long form and, and talking about our thoughts very openly as we have them. Um, and I think having played through the whole game to... Uh, as as much as I felt like the aesthetic was so different and the sort of quest for realism made the game feel so different and less dreamlike and just um, a different experience, I think by the end of playing through it, uh, it still felt like Shadow to me. And uh, it started to become more familiar and just felt normal by the end of the game. So it's right. easy to, uh, you know, I guess it's easy to forget that, that, I don't know, the game is more than the sum of its parts. And even if some of those parts are changed, it still amounts to something that is pretty unique and special. And uh, I still just, I'm, I'm glad it exists. And I, even though, even if it exists in a weird way, I'm glad other people are going to get to play it for the first time. So um, that, if nothing else, I'm really happy about. Uh, and I sort of came more, you know, I came to peace with the, the game itself, or the remake itself. Um, some it, It's still weird to me in a lot of ways. And again, does feel fundamentally different uh it doesn't feel worse though it just feels what you said with like uh with game. photo mode is interesting That's yeah i was i was actually thinking about that a bit when we were talking about being up on Gaius's head because that was actually the first time mm -hmm. in the game when i had used photo mode because i was like oh this is a really cool iconic moment um uh that i always remember being able to sort of see the forbidden lands and having positioned myself to see them in the best way uh and then with photo mode you can just pause it and swivel the camera around and see them and mm -hmm. you can turn the lighting to night and you can you know shift focus and everything but as soon as i started doing that i felt it felt sort of um uh it, it, i was like bastardizing what it was trying to be and that moment it was trying to create for me and i felt like as soon as i could move the camera and it sort of changed the scale of how guys felt and made him feel smaller which was like i feel like wasn't the intent so that was my first encounter with the photo mode and made me feel like maybe this is antithetical to the spirit of the game and the sort of authorial framing of all these fights so yeah, yeah again obviously i feel conflicted about a lot of these things but uh, i'm glad it exists mm -hmm. i'm glad it exists too um i want to throw this to you as well logan because i'm glad you raised it as well um because we haven't really gone into it much but i i am as 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 like someone who is very like just um yeah I, I sort of visually minded like uh I, i'm not to say superficial or anything i i, I just but I, I take my cues very much just like this sort of the visual medium um uh, that's kind of my vibe and and, and when i I find I find myself conflicted as well, like because I I feel so um, swept up by that moment that I I feel in the exact moment of feeling of just immersing myself completely. I also have this aspect that wants to definitely capture it, you know. So um so yeah, photo mode is both. It's literally like fifty fifty double edged for me. So uh, how about you, Logan? No, um I think when Nick uh, and Lord Nick uh, who who is. <laughs> 
present My somewhere in the in the ether at this point. In the ether. Um, now, yeah. but I, I would say that as well. I, but I like when I'm talking to Nick, I say Logan. I don't say you. That's <laughs> yeah. true. Yeah, I just feel so like good, I've been doing it. I've been doing it like a lot. It's fine. No, it's, fine. It, it's fine. If you said you, then it would be like, well, you're talking about me or Albert. So it, yeah. it, it works. It's it's fine, well, Logan. You must relax. Oh, when you're doing talking this. This is the second us. episode in a row, I think. You no, know, no, you must. Um, this is the second episode with a little like, bit of walking. Christopher in makes it. a when, makes a return. Okay, please when continue. Look. <laughs> Nick, we'll go with Nick. When Nick bought this up in the the first episode we had him on, um, I was saying how um I used photo mode uh when Valis dies. <laughs> Mm-hmm. and yeah. like i i immediately felt bad i was like "Ooh, i interrupted that like oh i shouldn't have done that. But right, i can right, just imagine right. the whole the whole yeah the whole orchestra just being like excuse me yeah. like because you just like <laughs> burst into the thing yeah. that like they stop playing their instruments and they're like excuse me <laughs> they just you know yeah i i i kept um i kept using it during the death scenes too and like i i <laughs> i felt bad but i was like I, look i gotta get pictures of these tentacles all right like uh, it's amazing <laughs> Uh, it's but like yeah, the wolf that, photographer that was, guilt, you know? So I I definitely do agree somewhat with that, where it kind of mm-hmm. does distract from the experience. But I mean, you know, it's certainly, I think it kind of complements just riding around the Forbidden Lands. You could yeah. say it complements it. You could say, you know, maybe that should also be an unbroken sort of experience. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's 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 totally a point that, that it makes sense to bring up. Um, I like that they have the option, which I immediately flipped back up, you know, I flipped that switch back up of like, oh, do you want to disable photo mode, which is you can just take away the option of pressing down on the D-pad, and um, I tried that for the first two Colossae, and then I just, yeah, yeah, I'm bit, that's the thing, you know, maybe something for people out there maybe wondering, oh, I'm on the fence of whether or not, maybe decide to in in advance of time because i really like this is one thing that i I resonate with the uh, next book and um and and logan and i've talked about this about that authorial experience if you do want if you do want to have that sense that you are that you are wonder you're experiencing this one-to-one and even if you divide the thing up in chapters it's like bastion from again i keep referencing the running story it just somehow like enters the ether when i talk about it is that he revisits it he takes breaks like he has his like sandwich and everything but when he's there he's there and he's not distracting himself so he takes these breaks but they're never they're never to have this voyeuristic uh, sort of um tone breaking kind of break you know um so maybe ahead of time just be like i'm gonna have a no photo mode playthrough just experience everything as it as it is take everything in right there and and that's something rare you don't have that in um like for example real life experiences you can't go to your friend's wedding twice you have to either make the decision yeah. i'm going to be present or i'm going to either take very little photos or a few photos but with with games where you can you can say that it's like well my first playthrough nothing i'm just going to experience it one-to-one and then the next one through yeah i'll just i'll really indulge in, and it, it really does reward multiple playthroughs uh, as well well so you Mm -hmm. know so yeah okay so uh, our last question this is one of my favorites because it's really great it's very simple where is the book and i said boss fight books done that's the last question thank you easy (laughs) done easy and done okie dokie so in terms of our wrap up um so our supporter supporter shout outs um at this stage we have uh few enough that i can basically rattle them off so we have adam we have yosef who co-hosts with me on god of war podcast thank you so much on the 15 dollar a month p- uh, tier um and uh, thank you all uh, as well to Tom and to Brendan, uh, all of you uh, just chipping in a couple of dollars every every month. It's so amazing. And I, I keep this pretty short. And I'm trying to keep it short and brief, even though I do get into my luck. I get choked up thinking about these amazing people around the world helping me. Ugh. If you guys remember uh, Mike Myers in like SNL, how he gets all like, I'm getting verklempt, you know? Not that, so. not that sketch. Okay, not that sketch. Uh, Nick, please help me. Uh, you I remember know, SNL, I, right? I do. I, I, I remember it well, Thank and you, you do a fine Mike Myers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, what is it? The the Roman design was based on the Roman Basilica. Discuss. Uh, I just fucking love it's that. It's funny you bring up um, SNL and you were doing Christopher Walken, because actually on the back uh, on the back cover of my Shadow of the Colossus book, there is a reference to a Christopher Walken SNL skit, which I'll leave to oh my God. Leave figure out <laughs> that's again connectivity of the ether it's amazing yep. i love it it's good <laughs> uh, um all right so please all right uh, so yeah so thank you so much to everyone helping us and um at this moment where as i mentioned a couple of teasers earlier with um uh the dune uh, podcast we're looking at uh, just having that same thing which we opened up those these doors to things like uh, you know the shadow dome we want to expand out because interactive artistry it has this uh we're, we're finding that we have this sort of wider realm that we can explore because 
because um, um, you know you don't want to. That's the whole point of it is that you don't want to. You don't want to restrict this medium to um, it, obviously it, the the core, the beating heart of this channel will always be interactive artist like artistry as in like games. You know, um, this uh, this medium is, is always going to be at the core. But um, what we also want to introduce is the idea that um, we we are entering a, a, a stage. At least what I'm, I'm hoping we um, see even more of is that uh, the lines blur away. Even Kojima spoken about this is like uh, in a couple of years, like literally the lines will blur away from between games and films and and uh, i think uh, james cameron has said this too so us uh, expanding out we've had a couple of feedback being like why are you guys branching out it's like well we're, we just want to be ahead of the curve and just saying this is we really really do feel like like, like they are going to be inherently connected and yeah to not stigmatize away and be like we're just games only so so dune but then speak <laughs> at the same term, turn as i say that we did also mention uh um the order podcast uh, which yeah november so we're actually i'm still in the process of putting together guests um getting in touch with folks for there but that'll be the tone of that show and it'll be it's nice to to, to see you, uh, to hear you earlier nick uh, raising your hand for that because that would be really wonderful to to bring your insights to that show and um but that'll essentially be just um you know again skype based so if we have any people connected to radio dawn who uh, so that their ears um, pricked up we we want to just basically basically speak with everyone who who, who um who, who just contributed to that to the of that uh, game and um it's uh, one of if you look back in the sort of the dark web of when uh, in, when interactive artistry first got, first got started, I I consider the order eighteen eighty six to be like one of the core pillars of when I myself like awoke to just like where this medium can go, like the idea that they were studying the, the like the organic like the anatomy of the human eye to be able to authentically portray a cinematic lens, and like the the game was featured in Time magazine for like advances of the, and now oh. it's just disappeared. Like this game, it's almost it's almost like a a, a pariah. Like no one talks okay. about it, which is just it's just criminal. Um, uh, they they went they they scanned like museum quality uh like no era like actually like clothing from the era of 1886 to just like get that exact kind of like um the, the like the feeling like they they did photogrammetry on like the lint to be to make these things like <laughs> as authentic as they were they went so in and they hired a uh, an Emmy nominated um uh screenwriter um, um, Kurt, Kurt Ellis who who did the Paul Giamatti which he won Emmys for um the uh what's it called um uh, it was like a, a historical drama so it's yeah so i'm really stoked about that so there's an extra extended tease there and um so for what we have ahead so if you uh, wanted to jump in and help us um where where that's kind of the direction we want ahead is just keep growing so but um i want to if it's all right on behalf of um just like i mean all of our listeners we certainly appreciate it but uh just uh, on behalf of interactive artistry everyone here nick it's it's a uh, it's wonderful to have you on the show again oh, hold, hold on hold on for a sec cuz oh yeah I, I get oh yeah it. I've, I know I've been teasing this throughout the episode. Oh, here we go. Oh, I, yeah. I wanted, Logan, yeah. just jump straight in. You take <laughs> yeah, the floor. Go, you, t- you take the Gaius platform. It's all yeah, yours. I, I want to say I, I've had for a long time, and if you follow me on Tumblr, you know this, like a little bit of a vendetta against Gaius because of how <laughs> massively popular he is compared to all the other Colossi. Now, you okay. know why. We know why he's popular. Nick, you did say it in your book. Um, you know, because he's humanoid, the wiki says it because it's maybe you could consider it the first real fight. It's on a big platform. You get up on top of his head, blah, blah, blah. So it really annoys me how he's on the cover of the remake now. Like, y- y- Valis <laughs> is just, you know, he's in the trash. You throw Valis in the trash, all right? He doesn't matter anymore. Oh, no, um, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that. That's not what I'm saying. That's what people, that's a blue point, you know? Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> you know, like it's Valus is the the first one. He's he's representative of what most of the Colossi look like. Um, mm. I I think that he should be the mascot, and it generally has just kind of annoyed me how much fan art um Gaius gets compared to the others. You know, my favorite is um is Pelagia. He gets like no fan art or it. Uh, yeah, yeah like, Pelagia is more mm. of an it. I think. Um, yeah, <laughs> but um. And yet Gaius, like, so many posters, you know, when you, like, like you have articles, like, you know, you when you would get retrospective articles about Shadow of the Colossus, Gaius would be at the top. Um, yeah. You know, they'd have, you have these pictures. I've actually weirdly seen multiple instances of fan art where Gaius is portrayed as being, like, 18 mountains tall instead of mm-hmm. 97 feet tall. 
um Whoa. bizarrely i i haven't seen much of fan art for any of the other class i like that but i've seen multiple pieces of fan art where you have like wander tiny in the foreground and guys just like standing up behind a mountain like reaching up into space um <laughs> Well, Logan, what did I say? The human form, people like literally artistry. Yeah, I, I it's, it's an unconscious so. thing. We're obsessed with it, you know? And um, mm. yeah, I, you know, it, it's, it, yes, it is a little bit funny, um, but <laughs> I, I do want to make an appeal to, to all you fan artists out there. Maybe just give Plagia <laughs> some art, give Hydra some art, you know? Um, you know, give uh, Dirge. How about Dirge? You know? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> he's he's kind of cool. We'll get to him eventually. <laughs> you yeah, sound um, like you sound like a dad trying to convince his son, like this this action figure's cool too. This the cheaper one, you know the one. <laughs> isn't this like uh, from Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger? You know, uh, every, yeah, everyone wants like yeah. Go ahead, Nick. As much as I love guys, I I agree with you. Um, and it makes me think about the remake. If that was less, if that really was speaking to uh trying to speak to fans as well and knowing that guys is the is sort of the most popular visually and saying hey remember shit of the colossus which basically is saying like mm -hmm. hey do you remember this colossus the one that we've seen the most uh you know public love and art for and everything so mm -hmm. maybe that was to try and capture those people and i guess one other more uh devil's advocate thought is that i think the cover of the original game with valis like it's nice, but it's still not, you know, anywhere as nice as the cover of this game should have been at the yeah. time. So I think mm. that even while it was the original, it wasn't especially great. Um, but I would totally agree with the sentiment of, like, let's see more fan art and homages to the other Colossi. Uh, or I I'd love to see people just also imagining what new Colossi could look like. I mean, we've seen, you know, there's plenty yeah. of, in you know, of pictures online and in the... Um, the uh, Japanese strategy guide, which I have here of a bunch of the Colossi that were cut and what they would have looked like. But it would be cool to see people just take sort of these some of these aesthetic themes and and come up with new ones. Like, what does a new 16 Colossi look like if you're designing them from scratch? Like, I'd love to look into that and have people imagine Ooh. what those fights could sound like. Like, that would be really cool to read. Well, Nick, you've um, incepted for us a potential um, a competition, which we may hold at some point of just like, hey, we want it's going to be like a super ambitious fan art thing of like, no, 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 not just one. I want you to design every, all like 16 brand new Colossae. Like you are in 2005, Fumito Ueda just said, "Lo, go, you know? <laughs> so um, we're not announcing it now, but I think that's, that's really nifty. I really dig that idea. Cool. Uh, Logan, was there, sorry, was there anything else on that, on that point? Or was no, it more, more gen just, general just, appeal? Yeah, it was. I just, the, you know, the moment I heard we were going to go into Gaius or we were going to go into the Colossi individual, I was like, oh, I just need to talk about like, I know. Why is you were like, so, you were like so screw popular. that guy. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, when, when you jump in, I might, if I'm like not lazy with the edit, uh, I will uh, it, like do some kind of music sting of like, wait, vroom, you oh, know, good. like yeah. <laughs> Logan won't let this episode slide. So and I, but opera, yeah. I, I initially felt bad, like I still do. And I, I, I definitely like uh, Logan. I didn't mean to kind of like wrap things up without you um, having oh, that. No. Like I'm, I'm, yeah, awesome, cool. Just had to check. Um, one one no, thing I, too, I'm just seeing now. Sorry, as a as a quick aside on the, I had pulled yep. up the Gaius um, Wikipedia wiki page that you guys had mentioned, uh, and I don't know if you guys have talked about the sort of Dorman's um, uh, prefaces for each fight, the little couple lines he says about each. But Gaius's mm. are a little interesting. He says, "Thy next foe is." A giant canopy soars to the heavens, uh, and that's interesting because I, I never actually looked into it. But canopy is obviously a very specific word, and I'm sure some yeah. stuff got lost in translation or changed in translation. I'm curious what that word was in in Japanese and what the intent is with that. Um, and then the latter half of it being the anger of the sleeping giant shatters the earth, uh, which is also like a little tip in itself of having you know I think of having having to have him like you know hit the mm -hmm. sword to shatter the wristband and stuff. So it's interesting, sort of what what sort of mood uh, slash information is embedded in some of those little uh, dormant shout outs in the beginning. That's true. That's true. And you've given me another idea of like, whenever we do have you, Nick, uh, we would love for you to read out. Like, this is just, I think that's cool. Like the idea of um, before we discuss, because uh, we, again, we're only like six episodes into this. We're still figuring out rhythms. Uh, we've, we've made obviously strides with them sorting out like the structure. And now we have those questions, which are really great. Shout out to that Reddit user. Um, but yeah, when, is that cool, Nick? Whenever you're on, you're just like, we'll just riff about the, maybe, maybe at the very start, because it is the very first thing we get about that Colossus. We, uh, we obviously see the cutter way to the statue and uh we don't right. really talk about the statues yeah because you know we could talk about the colossus itself but um i like the idea of like when we kick off talking about the next colossi whenever we do have you back we'll just uh, start with the quote and maybe break that down a bit so yeah that sounds um, good that, that's also how i the the, the uh, book chapters or the, the chapters book, in my absolutely. book are named mm -hmm. after those as well so 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, did you want to do a quick, uh, let's, let, I'll just, I'll, okay. I'll just say it right here. So the whole idea, I mean, come on, like the canopy soaring to there's a heaven. It's essentially tantamount to confirmation that yeah, it's a, it's a space, it's a spaceship. <laughs> 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 what do you reckon, Logan? Is it? <laughs> Is is it confirmation? <laughs> is it indeed? I mean, it, is is the canopy the big surface that you're fighting him on, or is is Gaius the canopy? Cool, a giant canopy source. I assume it's just Ooh. trying to describe something tall in a in a weird, mm. weird esoteric, lost in translation sort of way, but uh, mm. hard to tell, obviously. I gotta say, Nick, uh, I I really appreciate how you've named like your chapters so like evocatively, like taking from these quotes, like um like one of my favorite bands, Mastodon. They they essentially they love go Joseph Campbell, and Joseph Campbell has these ways of titling his sections and his his names and his terms for things that is just like this beautiful timeless kind of quality to them. And they have a song on like uh, Blood Mountain, which is like the hero of the gods, the crossing of the threshold, the belly of the whale, refusal of return, um, which are all either titles of um uh joseph campbell works or they're they're very much like in his sort of um opening statements in his chapters so your your book definitely has a campbellian kind of vibe to it which i really do and these cool, quotes as well I I'll, do. I'll, I'll take it and my uh and now knowing that you like mastodon not quite the same but my recommendation uh to you will be to check out um an instrumental metal band from chicago called pelican that I listen to I a, a lot. Are you oh, do you really? Me? Okay, oh, great. Yeah, man, I'm all up in there. And ISIS as well. You know, back when that wasn't such a dirty word. Uh, Did, um, instrumental band didn't you guys ISIS also kind of? I think, if I recall, you had a little music connection in the other episode as well. Where you were like, the sword, oh, yeah. This oh, that's band. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think are about to play here now. Drama. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Nick, uh, we have to throw this out because it's just crazy. So we had Justin Dressler on, who is out of like completely separated from like like um just independent project. He was creating this adaptation of the sword. If you see the used future, like they actually named their title track. Their, their their title track used future is it looks like his game, which is just spooky. Like I interviewed this guy like three months ago, and and the official music video essentially resembles exactly what he was making. So I'm like that's nuts so uh um, oh, wow. so yeah like the connection the weird connections to interactive artistry between the sword I, we're gonna have them on the show at one point and uh <laughs> it'd be great to have it'd be great to have you on that episode nick that'd be awesome yeah um <laughs> too easy i was gonna i just wanted to think the small thing to mention you you were talking about the chap the title chapters of my book um and i'll give yes. you one other easter egg from the book that i haven't really seen anyone call out to me that i haven't told to anyone um Ooh. But uh, the, I don't know what you'd call them, almost like paragraph breaks, whenever it's sort of a bigger topic shift, um, there's a series of dots, and it mm. starts with 16 dots at the beginning of the book. And as it goes forward, of course, it drops oh, down, you, you know, it drops dog. down <laughs> uh, dot by dot the whole way. You and, and your... Oh, subtle well, formatting well, thing. thank you. No, no, that's, <laughs> you don't know, you have no idea how like satisfying that is. Nick. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, because you know, obviously, every time you distribute a colossi, there's the doves, right? Yeah, yeah? yeah. And in the leather bound third or fourth edition in 2021, which I'm going to insist, I'll just be <laughs> like, I'll somehow crowdfund that whatever I need to because I want this one like editions to be carried forward. I want for those little dots to look like maybe I don't know, unless this gives it away, maybe those dots become doves. Maybe who knows? Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually had oh, I originally I so had much. like more, even more ambitious like ideas for that, but then my editors were like, yeah, that's a little, a little much. Which and they were right. It was a little. A little too much, but I'm glad we kept something in there. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that's so cool. All right, I dig that. Yeah, little hidden <laughs> Easter, it, like little literal. Oh, Easter eggs, Easter, happy Easter. Okay, sorry. Uh, oh yeah. That's what. Yeah, there you go. Dig it. It is the season for Easter eggs, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, you can go on your own little Easter egg hunt or a little gold coin hunt or, or whatever. Yes, uh, yeah. indeed, indeed. Too easy. Well, um, if we didn't have any other riffs on Gaius, I think we can close, like, get that nice crinkly sound of just like the tomes, uh, you know, the page closing on like the whole episode. If I can find some texture of that, come on, like, what's what? Hey, Logan, what is your go-to sound for like a book like closing and like a freaking fantasy film or something? Is it like Willow or something? Like or that huge sound of like a book closing? <laughs> You're asking me to remember a sound effect? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm in to the minutiae man do you know me i love minutiae <laughs> i i cannot say that i that i can remember one off right. the top of my head 
Okay, okay. Well, I, guess, I think my one is uh, maybe it's off the top of my head is like in the, the first Harry Potter movie, the little goblins have their just massive like ledger books and uh-huh. they slam those things shut. So if I uh, am not lazy with nice. the edit, I'll uh, edit something like that in. <laughs> but yes, uh, listeners, we are drawing a close on this uh, extended chat on uh, Gaius, the third Colossus. So the next Colossus, Logan, what will it be? Phaedra. Phaedra, who is, drumroll, is my favorite personally oh, i nice. love phaedra just so that's good feminine. because um i was like i don't know if we're gonna have that much to talk about with phaedra but i guess you will oh nice. big time yeah <laughs> and i'll um throughout the entire song i'll have um that song with the, the the kate moss dancing in it phaedra is my name just playing all the way uh, through nick you remember that one it's a bit of a deep cut but uh, no i know that song? you're yeah I, you're I, alone <laughs> i know i skin the surface with you a lot of the times but then when you go deep uh you you know you it's go okay. alone that's uh, all you. <laughs> you you go alone and i dig that man we we're each going to have um a, a moment like that for each of our kind of uh, uh diverticulars that we take but it is yeah by a band called uh, some velvet morning and it's um by oh lee lee hazelwood and nancy sinatra so phaedra is my name all right well okay why not actually no i will keep this this a little tease of the phaedra trivia i will keep that for the next episode but nick um thank you so much for joining us once again yeah, thanks, guys. That was great. Um, and uh, happy to join you again before the end. I'm, I'm excited to. I mean, I, I can't promise I'll listen to every episode because, like I said, I don't. I, fine, I, have, I have a weird thing about not listening to gaming uh, podcasts. Um, it's more just that you I need the break. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe that's part of it. Um, but I'm excited to like talk to you guys in a few episodes, just as you've talked through more of this stuff and and what sort of uh, yeah, what sort of issues you've you've gotten hung up on in a good way that you've really dug into and what the game becomes for you through these discussions over the course of it so i'm excited to hear and i appreciate you having me back no problem at all um uh, uh, logan do you have any other riffs of, either for like the listeners or nick or what, what, what go for it man no no i'm not no. of course uh, many thanks to nick for being on and um i don't know what what colossus uh would you be most interested in coming back for if you had to pick oh um i like the i'm forgetting the name right now the little lion the uh the where, the where the flame burns yeah yes oh gosh Celosia, i think yeah that's, that's, right. Right. that's right yeah yeah it's a fun one mm. cool. okay cool but well, there's a potential tease of um which one you might be back for but again it's it's obviously dependent on schedules and all that man and um i again i uh, i i reiterate it for the listeners how um nick is essentially the gandalf of this story he'll just appear <laughs> as he may and he sort of launched us off into the quest and i i kind of dig that it's really it's really nifty so um what's ahead for you nick in terms of uh upcoming um uh things you're getting up to um not too many projects i can talk about yet but coming out of gdc was definitely a, a fruitful one of like cool things i'll be kicking <laughs> off soon um some work i'll be diving into doing a little bit of writing on a couple different games you know in a smaller way and hopefully some other stuff in a bigger way um sort of working on a couple of games of my own as the first uh very few first baby steps towards that so we'll see where that goes um but yeah, not too much else in the meantime. Hopefully I'll have more things to promote more overtly in the future. But otherwise, uh, N. Sutner on Twitter is where most of my thoughts go. Fantastic. Awesome. And where can folks reach you, Logan? Well, you know, you can find me on um, at Inimitable Uman on Twitter. <laughs> and then, cool. of course, you can find me at uh, landsoflightanddark.tumblr.com for all my Team Eco stuff. Incredible. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'll just dive into our little um, kind of spiel here. So we hope, humbly hope you enjoyed uh, joining us for this uh, next kind of chapter of our ongoing journey across like, yeah, Forbidden Lands and, and uh, joining in this uh, big, wide analytical discussion that we're having and um, across the Uediverse, which I'm slowly thinking, should that should that have been the name for the podcast? <laughs> the Ued, Uediverse podcast? But um, but needless to say, you can reach us at uh, fumitoueda.podcast at gmail.com. Uh, we really honestly are listeners, just Fumito Ueda podcast everywhere. So on Tumblr, on Instagram, so you can just find us easily. So I won't go through all. And yeah, Fumito Ueda pod on Twitter if you wanted to get in touch. And we'll do a similar um, Q&A um, post as we did for this one next time nick is on and should have a nice fun time with uh, either Celosia or whichever one you join us back uh, on uh, nick cool sounds good incredible too easy fantastic well take it easy listeners and we'll catch you next week bye, bye.
Am I speaking with Nick Satna? Hello, how's it going? <laughs> How are you, buddy? <laughs> hey. And we have a Logan. Amazing. Good to speak with you both, gentlemen. That's uh Yeah. You as well. How are you feeling uh, early in the morning? Oh, stop. Oh, stop it, Nick. You know, I'm, I'm always good for these. Look, you can hear it in my voice. I'm rattling. Oh, I know go. you are. <laughs> and I don't know how, but yeah. I know. It's all good. I was awake from like one. Uh, like whenever I know that I have like a show, uh, although like Logan, sometimes I have like, yeah, the body has just shut down and stuff. But like because of the regular scheduling and the regular recording time, it's um I've, I've been able to store up a reservoir of ability to wake up at proper times. So um. Yeah, it's pretty good, but it is getting very cold I appreciate here. You guys being flexible. Oh no, it's no problem at all, Nick. Anytime. Uh, it's getting cold here in Canberra, so that that little prep time. You may have thought it was me like getting podcast gear together. Now nah, it's just me getting like blankets and stuff. Because <laughs> it's uh, we yeah. Have... I'm um, I'm trying to test my recording because I don't, you know, I, I don't want to make sure that what happened last week, but it doesn't happen this week. Okay. Um, okay cool. But I'm having some trouble with that. I don't know what the problem is. It's um, it's you. It's always been you. No, dude, never mind. It's I mean, like it is. I want to I want to say something. I want to say something Logan. So I always record like a couple of different tracks. So I have the baseline mono mono track with all of us on it and then so like it'll be fine. Um if you can get your okay, quick time so. Yeah, if you can get your quick time thing happening, um that should be fine. Are you cool to record your audio, uh, Nick? Yeah, I can just I can just do it in quick time as well. Sweet. Um there is I, I was use... going to say I, I, oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I use Audacity just because I don't, you know, okay. I don't, is QuickTime even available for Windows or uh, I don't even know? Uh, probably, but I bet it's shitty. Um, <laughs> nice. I, I usually use Audacity as well, but I, I never actually like look to do recording in QuickTime and it looks pretty straightforward, so I'll just try it there. Um, but I was going to say too is, I, I forget, I'm trying to remember the name of it. There's a, a podcast recording site that um, I used with some folks a couple months ago where you just send a link and it locally records everyone and then like auto uploads to the same place for the podcaster to get. That seemed really what helpful. What the hell? This sounds like, what is this yeah. dream you speak of? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, Amazing. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think it is Zencaster. Zencaster. You get a Zencaster without an E, so Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R. Oh, dude, thank you uh, so much for letting us know about that. Sure, yeah. It, it seems super easy because, yeah, you just send a link out, then everyone clicks record, and then at the end it just auto-uploads the locally recorded track to the you know to the person hosting. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Uh, I'm, I might look into that. There might be. You might have to, yeah, actually, it looks like you do have to pay for it, but I assume it's reasonable. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, it says that hobbyists is free, and then it says professional is 20 bucks a month. Um, okay. But, uh, yeah, it looks, it looks like the hobbyist stuff is just limited to, like, how many hours you can do. Um, I might have to figure out where they're, like, their, their sort of H, like headquarters are and, like, volunteer to just do, like, garden work for them for a month and just be yeah. like, hey, <laughs> is this cool? Can, I, can we make this work? And uh, who knows? We'll see. Okie dokie. Um, so I've got my show notes all ready. Uh, it's very much like Nick, same thing as last time. We just, we're just we just going to riff and uh, sort of flow pretty um, like loose structure. You know how it, how it was from last time. Sure, yeah. Uh, works, uh, works for me. I, I shamefully haven't listened to uh, episodes beyond that since I, for some reason, don't really listen to any gaming podcasts. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> Dude, you're busy and stuff, right? Like, come uh, on. It's, 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 I don't know. Weirdly, it's not even that. Like, I listen to a lot of podcasts. It's just for some reason... Like my whole life is gaming, except for podcasts, and I listen to a lot of other stuff. <laughs> what's uh, what's uh, a few, what's a few of them that you listen to? Um, a lot of them that are on the Gimlet Podcasting Network. Uh, there's one called Every Little Thing. Oh, um, nice. There's Startup Podcast. Um, a whole bunch. It's more the sort of uh, like the very highly produced, um, like segmented, like This American Lifestyle podcast. Oh yeah, I've uh, heard that one. Um, Greg. So uh, of, yeah. I think you know you spoke with Greg Miller the other month. Actually, like he he's all about that. That's the first one out of his mouth when he says like it's the podcast that he listened to, and um, that's yep. that that barometer of like audio quality is is you know it's what we're sort of um, slowly making our way towards, hopefully down the line. So that's what we want to do. Sure, sure. And it just, I mean, I think making an episode like that takes, you know, like weeks of editing and construction. Yeah. It's a different sort of format. But uh, anyway, sorry, I don't want to hold this up. No, man, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. So, Logan, are you all uh, good to go? Um, I hope so. I think, you know, I'm going to take a look at the audio levels when we start. Um, okay. It's, it's coming through uh, pretty I'm clear gonna... on, the, on the Skype recording. but Yeah. Uh... No, I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with that. It's some weird issue I would... 
just with maybe the microphone that's attached to my earbuds or something. Um, okay. I don't really know. Okay. Might have something to do with, with me moving around, which is like, I don't, you know, I'm not like standing up and walking around. But, you know, <laughs> even, I guess, even minute movements um, might have something to do with it. So I, I don't know, but I'm going to look at it. I believe I believe in the power of the podcast. You know how you have to believe in the heart and the the heart of the cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, we need yeah. to just believe, and we can make we can, <laughs> we can get through this. <laughs> all right, I mean it's all good, dude. If you can't record, um, then like just like whatever program you used last time, just like if that's like voice memos, whatever. Well, but uh, like we'll just crack on if that's cool with you, Logan. I didn't use I. I... For some reason, I ditched voice memos for Audacity, but I kind of forget why. I'm wondering if maybe I should try again with it now. Maybe, could I use both at once? Would that even be possible? Maybe. I wonder if that would be too taxing on my computer here. No, that's all good, dude. But just in the interest of time, I reckon we'll get started. Hey, how do you reckon? You, you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, well, I'll just start recording my... Oh, Nick, if you want to start recording your audio now. Yep, cool. And that is happening for me too. 001, okay, 002, on... 003. Okay, I'm going now. Fantastic. Look at this, the gang, the the, the, the three member uh a freaking um um power ranger trio that I, don't wear like the power ranger <laughs> outfits and everything. I say sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, restart my recording uh real quick just because Nick, I I chose the I know, I know I am a I chose the maximum setting uh for quality. <laughs> And it, it, like, after a few seconds was already, like, five megabytes. So it seemed like it was on track to be, like, tens of gigabytes, which uh, would be oh, a yeah. locker. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that, that's so that just... legit. Like, like I was just kidding. And, like, dude, you don't want yeah. that. <laughs> no one wants that. Okay. So I'm going to leave it on the high setting instead. Yes. See how that goes. In that case, I will quit mine and start uh -huh. again. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Can I keep going, or should I... Oh yeah, I, yeah. Also? Just yeah. Stop yours, and we'll start again because it's it's always uh, easier with okay. the edit if you just everyone starts at the same time. So quick time. Okay. Do do do. Thanks for bearing with us, Nick. You're a legend. Yeah, anytime. Too easy. Just tell me when. Nick has got that sort of leathery, leathery skin, just like sun bleached experience of like podcasting patients. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, that's uh, over the years, and so we appreciate it. So new audio All right, recording. So I just started recording. Fantastic! Look yeah. at it. Look, yeah. and Logan is screaming ahead by a couple of seconds, and he's screaming around the track. Okay, 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 guys, have a good show, and I'll just count us down. In three, and two, and one. Okay, everyone, don't hang out. But don't hey, where are you going? Hey, hey, come back, c -c come back. Obviously, I'll have edited all of this perfectly. Uh, Nick, I'm struggling. Ask me why I'm struggling, Nick. Why are you struggling? I just I just got into on cinema at the cinema, and I need to. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Because it obviously is a, it's like a parody of podcasts, and whenever I find myself stumbling, uh, like at all, I'll just I just feel like dipping straight into like Tim Heidecker kind of mannerisms. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like uh, uh, a, sh a shadow uh, of, of, of Fumito, um, uh, of the uh, the gay the Gaius the the Gaius uh, the Gaius uh, from Colossus. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you watch that, Nick, or do you, at all? No, no, I don't. All it's right. So good. I, this is the first time I've heard that Albert watches it. I'm very uh, surprised. You need to, Nick, impressed. please do yourself a favor again after you've watched the uh, you know uh, the second Jumanji. It's called On Cinema at the Cinema, yeah. and if you enjoy like Tim and Eric, yeah. um, uh, in in in, in doses, moderation, maybe. in doses, yeah. Well, well it's, it, the thing is, On Cinema is not too similar to Tim and oh, Eric. Yeah, it's, it's just not, that yeah. Tim, yeah, is Tim yeah. is one of the main guys in it. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, if you don't mind, send me a link. That sounds uh, sounds up my alley. Let's yeah, I will. Yeah, because it is essentially like because you know you're a podcaster and so am I and 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 I've just had to just make sure, especially as I've just been, I'll, I'll it'll obviously like enter more like muscle memory of just like it's all good. I'm I'm recording. I'm in that mode. But there've been a couple occasions because his show is specifically designed to like parody, uh, like uh, podcasts that don't have like let's say like um this America this uh, American Life kind of levels of production. And I'm obviously mm -hmm. trying to amel ameliorate that as we go along with uh, getting better tech and everything but it's just very easy to just be like oh god and you just like i i almost like hatch myself laughing it's so good so i'll send that to you well, um, Albert, are, are you are you listening to the podcast first or are you getting into the web show also dude the, the oscar specials yeah, are just they a lot of content me, it you is know, so I, much. I haven't really seen the oscar specials because they're so damn long i, mean, I, I need to got watch the oscar the fever how about you <laughs> 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 so bad. All right. Um, too easy. Okay, dokie. Well, you know what? Um, 
I think that's it. Let's mosey on towards our days again. Yeah. Like, uh, do you have any other little extra post-show ditties for us, Logan? Well, I, I, did, I did want to say, um, I guess it's so weird, like, kind of being half still recording and half not. Yeah, I always you know, thought it was being somewhere in the episode. Being Definitely. more casual with it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, there's this theory that I really want to bring up. Um, and I knew, I kind of knew we, we probably wouldn't have really have time today. It just wouldn't work to go mm. into it and, mm. and kind of an episode that would probably end up being quite long. Yeah. Um, there's this theory that uh, was, I think, uh, posted on March 14th in a couple different places by this guy. And it's about, uh, it's about the Dorman Nimrod connection, which mm. is something that I think uh, Nikki yeah. actually mentioned in the Gaius chapter. Um, in your yeah, book yeah. Again. <clears throat> But it's, I've never seen anyone go into it as much as I've seen this guy go into it in this theory. And there's actually like a lot there, like oh beyond God. Norman being beyond. Oh, really? um, sorry, did I say Norman beyond Dorman being Nimrod backwards? There's like a lot of little parallels to the Nimrod story. Oh, um, it's, it's, about, it's about all the theory. voices being scattered. Or it's about the entities being scattered, right? That whole angle. Yeah. Well, it's, it's that and more. Um, it, there's a uh, lot cool. more. Than I, than I even thought. Uh, he does go into, and I'm going to get into this, I guess, whatever episode I bring this up. Um, I uh, I am very anti mono is the queen stuff. Mm. Um, right, right. And it's, there, there is a point in this theory where the guy's like, take a look at mono. <laughs> now, take a look at, now, now take a look at the queen. And like the implication gotcha. is that you're supposed to go, wow, they look so much alike. But like to me, it's like, no, what these people <laughs> different like what are you doing yeah dude. but great theory um <laughs> mostly mostly really great theory and i'm gonna get into that at a future episode i dig it fantastic cool. okay dokie well what time is it for everyone what's uh for yourself nick uh 3 20 in the afternoon man have a good lunch or uh, happy uh like sitting on and like happily having had lunch just now uh logan yourself a podcast um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. Uh, it's six twenty-two for me. I'm gonna see Ready Player One at nine thirty tonight. Amazing. Nice. Enjoy. Okay. Cool. Do you have you seen it, Nick? Uh, no. I might end up. I might see it tonight as well, but I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Cool. I might. Uh, att- I may briefly consider and then subse- subsequently not see it. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. Well, um, although I did um, see. I'm, uh, I'm... Yeah. Go ahead, Nick. Oh no! Sorry. I was just gonna say uh, as a side note. Uh, also, I'm. Uh, I exported this uh, audio and I'm uploading now to send to you. It exported as like an M4A out of QuickTime because there was a lot of options. But if that ends up being an issue, just let me know and I'll see if I can convert it on my You have the quietest typing I've ever... Do you have like a surface or something? I just could not even tell. Usually I have the, 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 the eyes, the ears of some kind of high-tuned person creature that's able to hear very well. What's it? Because eyes of a hawk, what, what the fuck? Like ears of a fox. There you go. How the hell did you do that? Oh, like eyes, I usually ears, what's the difference? Uh, exactly. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, uh, eyes, ears, what's the difference? They're all orifices. What? <laughs> uh, okay, well thank you for that, Nick. I and know, just quite quiet quiet background tasks, you know. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, can you um start a game? Maybe create a game called Quiet Background Tasks and it's just a super meditative mobile tasks, game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just the sound of typing. <laughs> Just like the people have the sound of rain, you know, like the rain channel, and it's a... all right. Well, um, yeah, have have an awesome rest of the week, guys, and we'll catch up uh, next time uh, for yourself, right. Logan, See next week. Yeah, and uh, whenever we yeah, get you back, Nick. thanks. All right, bye, guys. Cool. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you.